Welcome into the Cam and Strick podcast, episode number 90. 90. Joey Juno. I was going to say Juno. No, you weren't. Yeah. Number 90, Ryan O'Reilly. Ryan O'Reilly. Damn, I forgot about that mug. Oh, right. Yeah. Joey Juno. He was kind of a bust. No, he wasn't. No, he wasn't. Pat Falloon was. My bad. Pat no. Falloon was. What Joey, am I thinking of Joey, Joey Juno? Joey Juno was damn good, man. Yeah, yeah, might be. Yeah. Pat Falloon was a fucking bust. I remember on Do, uh, Don Cherry Rock'em Sock'em one time, Pat Falloon dived into the net when he was like a first pick overall, I think, for San Jose. Yeah, he was a high pick. High sure. pick, right? Yeah. And then I remember one video where he dived into the net, and clearly he didn't touch the puck, and he looks at the ref and goes, I got it, I got it, and oh, Don Cherry fucking bashed one him. One of those. Yeah. Would and that then, bother you? Fucking A. Although I probably did that a couple times for assists, but who cares about me? We're talking about Pat Falloon. He looked like a jackass. Does that happen in the NHL? Fuck yeah, man. Really? Especially you get the second assist. Did you touch that cam? Damn right hey, I did. You know what? I see it all the time. After games, players going up to oh, the PR yeah. staff. In the American League, I see it happening more than anything. Hey, man, I should have gotten an assist on that goal. There should be a secondary assist. I touched that. Go back and watch the replay. It hit my skate. You know what? If you know the refs and they like you, they'll hook you up one way or the other yeah, organically. But here's my question. like Inside the dressing room, if you got credit for a secondary assist, and it gets taken away because somebody who maybe is more established, older, veteran guy took it away from you. Took it away from you. Wouldn't you be, you be pissed, you'd be like, man? Especially if you're a young kid, you'd be like, "You fuck boy." That's right. Like fuck you. And you know what? You're a leader on this team, and you're stealing fucking. Like, what are you going with this? You're making two hundo anyway. You're not good enough to make the NHL. You're 35 years old, and you're in the minors, and you're stealing fucking assists. Two hundo. Fuck you. Two hundo. Probably three hundred at, at that point. Oh, you're talking about down in the minors. I'm talking in the yeah. No, no, no. It happened I'm, in the listen to me. Happened in the minors more than the NHL. NHL they have fucking video everywhere. You're not getting it wrong, right? In the mi yeah, you're not. And not for ten years. And what? Here did you get a goal taken away from you? I'm sorry. <laughs> did that happen somewhere? No, but here's what I'm gonna say. Don't think it doesn't happen. No, they, they try it. I've even had guys look, but but Toronto doesn't lie. I've seen Toronto guys, don't lie. They're gonna get it. They're they're gonna go back and look at that sequence, dude. And they're gonna I've take seen it away from them. Guys have goals taken away from them because X player is saying, "Hey, man, I touched my shaft or touched my skate on the way in." You can watch the replay five hundred thousand times, and you can never tell. So they'll get, and he but still that's gets rare, it because you can't tell. But okay, but in the minors though, that happens because guys still want to get called up and they need all the cookies they can get. Mm -hmm. So you do see that where you'll you'll see a guy wait. So it's so funny. And the video is not as sophisticated, whatever. Not at all. No, you can't. No, it's only one guy. Every everybody in the American League, right? They'll have one. The home the home team will have their one camera up very far up, and it's so shitty, right? Mm -hmm. That's why all the American League fights, yeah. unless you're in like fucking Wilkesbury or like Lehigh Valley, where mm -hmm. the camera crew is cool. But you'll see guys, and you'll notice it. At the end of the fucking period, everybody gets in the locker room. They'll see Dick Boy go over to the ref and be like, you know what? I think that, uh, blah, 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 blah. And then all of a sudden they change, and you're like, you fuck. When you're in the American League, how often are you on TV? I don't know. Once every three weeks. What was more decorated, your American League career or your NHL career? What was more decorated? Decorated? What? None. <laughs> Neither one. Neither one. What kind Come of stupid on. ass question is that? What do you mean, decorated? Decorated. Do I, do I want to decorate my American League career? What does that mean? Did I score more goals? No. Did you have fun playing in the American League? No. At the beginning, yeah. But the, at the end, oh my God, I was depressed as shit. Were you? Man, big time, dude. I was fighting guys. Well, I was you on were some going boxing. Some other shit, too. Yeah, and it, was, it amplified. Well, I was from losing a my hockey hair. standpoint. You were losing your hair. Yeah, I was losing my hair. I this was on like a bunch of shit, mm. like medicine, and, and this fucked me up. And I was depressed, and I was injured, and I didn't know. And I was, I was spending my, my money wasn't there that I needed, and I was just fucking like done. Let man. me ask you this: When you're young though, and you're in the American League, and you see veteran guys come down, they get set down, yeah. or whatever. Like, yeah, what, yeah. what's that like seeing guys come down, get sent back up, it come depends. and go? It just depends, Andy. It's a great question because. You're like, fuck you. I just looked up to you. And you come down, you have a ton of money in the bank. And I know I always say that, and people are like, Cam, you're but that has a lot to do with everything. It has a lot to do with everything. I went through shit and back, and I spent my money. It's all my fault. But if I had coin, I would be in a way better spot. So when you have that money that you've already established, where you know you could kick your feet up, whether your health is bad or not, you know you could take care of your family, and you come down here because you're fucking miserable because of your status, Fuck you. Mm. And you don't talk to the rookies. You don't take care of them. You don't even hang out with them. Fuck you. And just that one player, that yeah. one person, he can bring down an the entire whole time. dressing room, That's right? why you got sent down. Now, on the other hand, on the other hand, because it's not all negative by any means, you get a fucking awesome guy sent yeah, down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Danny McGallis, a couple of the boys that come down, and they're like, I'm pissed at Lou. 
I'm pissed at whoever. I didn't get sent down in, in, in when I played for St. Louis, so I don't know. I got pissed at Lou, but the boys are the boys, and I'm taking them out, and I'm taking care of them. We, those guys, it happened all the time. Mm-hmm. Now that you get some of the dickwads that come to me, 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 me. Who would take you out? But at that point, I... When you're young, any veteran guys get sent? Like who's in the, in the who's NHL? A really or in the, good, who's a really good veteran NHL player you played with in the American League? Can oh, you, um, great question. Damn, at the end of my career, I was kind of the oldest guy on the yeah, team, right, dude. I right, was, right. Like, but early things, in your career, though. damn. But I didn't wasn't down a lot early. I, at the beginning, I mean, Robbie Skurlak and even Alex Brooks, Brooksy, the St. Louis, yeah. not a St. Louis guy, yeah. Wisco guy, yeah. married a girl from St. Louis. She's going to be an assistant GM somewhere. I'll tell you that right well, now. She's, she's going to be? You said his wife is no, going to be? No. He will be. He will be. Yeah, he's super smart. No, man. she's the GM of the household. And he's a great guy. He's man. a fucking, oh my, he, he was my he, captain. He's the type of guy you want to <gasps> bring into your organization. Oh my God. You want Brooksy. good people or Why do you no? think Lou had him around? Oh yeah. Why do you think Lou had him around? Mm-hmm. Brooksy, Robbie, Skurlak, guys like that, man. Even Mikey Scroisey. Mike Scroy, who didn't play in the NHL, but an older guy. Like, I was the only... And David Clarkson, the only guy that kind of hung out with him, he was kind of wild, you know, this, that. But, man, like, there's a lot of guys, dude, a lot of guys. But there's a lot of dickheads that get sent down, and they're, they, but, like, fuck you. But you know what, you. see, it's such a difference, though, in, yep. the, in the NHL when you're out, and one guy's making $8 million, and, you know, yeah. everybody else isn't. Some guys are making two, three, four. Some guys are making seven fifty, eight fifty, whatever. Yeah, yeah. In the American League, like, the highest paid guy, he may be making three fifty, three hundred, something like that. And they're trying to save as much money as they can. Like, should they be expected to take everybody out when they're making three fifty and everybody else is making seventy five? Yeah, but you're not going out to big boy places. You're going to fucking. You're in fucking Wilkesbury Scranton. You're going to you're going to, little you're going to Lo- you're going to Longhorn, or you're going to the restaurant at the bar. Yeah. Well, yeah, you do take the guys and out making up a, a, a tab for a couple hundred. Come on, bucks. because you're making three fifty in the minors. You already made NHL money, or you've been making money for a long time, right? Mm-hmm. Like, come on. So if you get sent down, you take care of shit. I did that in Nottingham, and I already spent a ton of my money, and I'm still fucking doing it. Like, and I love it. I probably did it too much. Nottingham, expensive place to live. Oh, yeah, and super Eng- expensive. England's an expensive place to live. I did. I don't know because we didn't pay for anything. We didn't pay for anything, Eddie. What do you mean? I know they, you don't. You don't no, pay for your room and board. No, nothing. We pay you don't for pay a, for a car. No, we pay for water. Heat and that was very expensive, homie. Really? Listen, I would take a shower in Nottingham. How right? cold does it get? Yeah, 40, 30. Snow? Yeah, it'll snow here and there. It's beautiful. Mm-hmm. Fucking loved it. The people, I love you. God almighty. I can go over there right now and be surd if I wanted to. Kate's already a fucking queen over there. But the water bill, Andy, I'd be in the shower. I love my showers. I get my groove on to catch my drift. Like I sometimes you just gotta do that, and I just like to jam out and I put, like listen to music. And I don't like, want to catch that. Just drift. Stop it! I don't want to catch that. Drift. I'm sitting in the shower, jacked, of, of course, but I jam out to music. <laughs> I get my mind right, think about what I'm gonna do that night or fight or whatever. Mm-hmm. The water lasts for seven minutes, and you gotta have to you have to go to the heating part of the of the apartment where the heater is, the water heater, and you have to adjust how much minutes you want for your fucking shower. You have to put money in there. <sighs> Quarters. You know, you have to do that at the train station to take a piss. A dime. You have to put a dime in to go over a thing like a carnival fucking ride where you go through anything that goes... Gug, gug, gug. What's, what's the purpose? Trying to save water? Yeah. They're, yeah. And another thing, the doors won't shut. Why is that, Cam? Why do you say that, Cam? You're in a somewhat nice apartment. Why don't the doors fucking shut correctly? I'll tell you why. Because there's different zones in England. You could tear shit down here. We're there. Everything's in a different zone. If you you can only rehab different things, so there's like three different stages. So if it's like an older plant of something that's not like from fucking King Henry the Eighth, it's a level one or maybe I get that wrong, but whatever. So they get the cheap motherfuckers to go in there and fix all the doors for cheap. But if it's a level three, they get the expensive guys in there because King Louis the fuck was in there. So they, get their back ride, the day. they get there right away. I yeah. hope not. Man, it's terrible. Okay, I'm just saying. Yes. So just weird different things. But I love England as a whole. Uh-huh. Would I want to live there permanently? No. But on the other hand, to stay there for a year, goddamn right. Is it expensive? Yes, it is. Go drink. Be an alcoholic over there. Tell me how much money you spend every day. Okay. <laughs> well, maybe we'll get some people to and chime in And try to on find that. chew, too. Holy macaroni. How's your chew going? I'm gonna get you off Not of that. Good. I'm gonna Andy, get you off. For asking. I'm gonna get you Jesus off of that very, very quickly. I know, I know. Very we'll, soon, we'll, we won't talk we're not about ready it. For that yet. But I'm getting you off the chew. Thank you. Okay. In I time know. for 2021. I know. I know. People are bugging me about it. I get it. I get it. I will. I are get, they? I get, yeah, kind of. Man, kind. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, they kind of are. Okay. Uh, how was your Sorry, weekend? Good weekend. Good weekend, dude. 
uh, 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 relatively something, something uh, relatively boring. Okay, <laughs> I still have a pile of dirt in my fucking driveway, like a goddamn Hoosier that says "free dirt" sign on it, which people walk by and like, oh, hi, Cam. Is You're anybody funny. taking any of the dirt? No, no, and it's gonna rain tonight. No, and it's gonna rain tonight. But I did save a dog. That's what I do. I save children and dogs. I'm Superman. I could be Superman and Batman combined. I don't know, but I saved a dog. And you know what? I I, I I found this little doggy, and I'm like, you know what? This poor little doggy, somebody, somebody lost it. Somebody lost this little doggy, so I'm like, gosh, I'm in Eureka. I'm going to go to, on Facebook and go to Eureka Peeps, which is like the Eureka where all the cougars are and all that stuff. And I go, Kate, take a picture of me and this doggy. We have to find the owners. So Kate takes a picture of me and the dog, and then we put it on Eureka Peeps. Does the dog have a tag? No. No tag. Andy, that's just a stupid question. Eureka because if the fucking d- dog had a tag, I'd be like, oh, I'm going to go to your house right now. I'm going to call hey, your number right now. What's Eureka Peeps? It's a it's a Facebook it's account. It's like an which all, or something. Yeah, yeah. No, it's just a net Facebook account that has all the Eureka it's people. It's like next door. It's flooding here. This is happening. Yeah. Mayor uh, yeah. Flower will come on and be like, bye, bye, bye. hey, Cam, can I come on your show again? Mayor I love Flower? You. Well, he's the mayor of Eureka? Well, I'm the mayor. He's my fucking assistant. <laughs> is what how that, how that Honestly, how that goes. But. So I posted on Eureka Peeps, mm-hmm. and I actually became disgusted. Yes, the owner said, Cam, I have the dog. I'm right down the road, and I t- dropped the dog off and was. But I, I became disgusted. Well, you know why? Why? Because all the wives and the women are like, when they saw the picture of me and the doggy, they're like, oh, my God, he's so cute. And I'm like, listen, girl, stop it. <laughs> they're talking about the dog. No, they're know. not. Stop it. They're like, he's so cute. I'm like, no, I'm married. You know who I am. Oh, can I take him home? <gasps> Kate saw that. Mm. I'm like, Kate, don't worry about it. Kate, don't worry about it. I'm staying home with you, girl. You're you're the fucking baddest bitch. I'm chilling with you. You're my girl. What time did this happen? Uh, like one o'clock in the afternoon. Oh, on Saturday. Mm-hmm. You know what's it's crazy, man. Did the, you do one too? The same thing did the women to me? say the same thing? How cute you were? They and I'm were, like, this is unacceptable. They were thanking me. So a lady shows up at my house, hysterical. She lost her dog. Yeah. And she said, can I take your dog and walk it around and maybe my dog will smell can your dog. Can make love with it. That's kind of weird. And maybe it'll run to you. And I'm like, sure, go ahead. My kids are like, no. Like, did you just give the dog away? Like, my wife's like, did you just let someone just take your dog? I'm like, yeah. She's going to go find her dog. So she doesn't have social media. I put it up on the, the next door website. Mm. That Eureka this lady, Peeps, yeah. It's like Eureka Peeps. Yeah, yeah, but not as cool. It's Ladue Peeps. Okay. Fancy lad. Cake eating peeps. Why don't you fucking put that in there? It's the Lord. It, it, it's the fucking poor part of the do. I'm fucking blue collar, baby. The poor part of the do peeps. Oh shit. Anyway. Cake eaters. Dude, I put it up there. Um, and it's not my dog, you know, whatever. It's a little Stella, it's a beagle. She comes back around one o'clock in the morning, still can't find the dog. Hysterical. My wife's oh, crying oh, with her oh, in the Jesus. in the driveway. Oh, she doesn't I even know. know. And uh so I guess middle of the night, we wake up to a text, maybe like four or five in the morning, whatever. Somebody found the dog. And, you know, because we got the word out yeah. on you this website. You didn't do website. shit. No, Fuck we that. got the word you out on the website. You didn't do shit. And people had a all-out search. There's helicopters. There's Get strobe the fuck lights. out of here. Everyone's you did looking nothing. for the dog. We found the dog. We brought Stella home. You didn't do shit. You posted it. Dude, my I, st- no, my no, no, story no. is so much better than you. I had a parade for myself. They had a parade for me in Eureka, and it's fine. I'm waving everybody. I'm like, blah, blah, blah. let's get this thing going. I got shit to do. Mm-hmm. And then they, they put another statue up because the other one got torn down what because was they the were tearing. What name, the, other, the dog that Duke. you found? Duke. Duke. He, he looks like a Duke. He looks they, like a badass. They put another statue up because they tore my other one down because they were tearing down statues for like a, like a month ago. They started doing uh, that trend, mm-hmm. and they, mine got in the way. And yours was one of them? Mine got in the way. It is what it is. But I think I am going to go to hell, and here's why. I didn't save the dog, to be honest with you. I just realized that halfway through the parade and halfway through, you know, the construction of the statue, I realized I was next door at my parents' house, drinking beer with my dad, playing with their doggies. Kate was on a run, who's 100 pounds, probably 98 pounds after that run, to be honest with you. <laughs> probably lost two pounds, 98. And she had this 100-pound fucking American bulldog taken down because she found it cruising around and she felt bad for it so she went after it, 98 pounds grabbed a 100 pound dog held it down called me eight times i didn't answer my fucking phone so she called my mom my mom did this this that and the other and then i'm the one that said take a picture of me and the dog like i saved it then i pumped my own tires up they had a parade for me and it had nothing to do with me it's all kate am i going to hell so did you meet the owners like when you yeah, dropped oh, yeah. It off? oh yeah huge hockey fans of course are they yep and how the so, dog get out they left it I, andy 
I don't know. Did it run away? No, it was just it was it sniffing around. So, it's got a big ball so sack these on people, the back, like one of those trucks in like, oh, yeah. you know, okay. not Ladue. <laughs> yeah. So these people were playing with the dog at, a, at like a local school, yeah, and yeah. the dog just took off. And But they were, man, they were so upset. They were so upset. It's like, it's losing, a horrible it's like thing. losing a kid. But have you ever what, lost your dog before? Yes, I have. I have too. For two for a month. I had two doggies when we were, we've always had dogs. We lived out way out in the middle of the woods. My mom and dad both had it. We had a Gordon Setter and a little Scotty. The woods. It, we did. We in the fucking way in Black Madonna Shrine. Look it up. <laughs> Look it up. There's an infirmary out there, too. A bunch of psychos. I shit kicked all of them when I was like five. Here's the point. We had two awesome dogs. Mm-hmm. They were gone one morning. My mom, little Basil, Basil McCray. We late named that Basil McCray. I told you that. After I told you Basil. Wow. We had little Basil and Scotty, little shit kicker. They were gone. And my mom is losing her mind. It was the most horrific mm. for, for weeks. And my, my, my mom is on my dad so bad. Like, you know, just like, because she's so emotional. My dad drives 20 miles away to House Springs across the Merrimack River, cruising around, was going to go pick up pizza at this fucking Pisano's in House Springs. You all know if you're a hillbilly like me. And he pulls around a video store. A video store back in the day, not mm-hmm. Blockbuster, no, a video no. store. There they are, like right an, there. Like an adult? Video, my dad turns, you yeah, not an adult, maybe. My dad turns over. Basil and Mackie are right there. No. They swam. Is Mackie your dog too? Yep. Dave Mackie, baby. He got his ass kicked by Wendell Clark, whatever. They swam across the fucking river somehow. And my dad found them 20 miles away Isn't that randomly. Amazing? And they jumped in. My mom. Oh, God. Isn't I remember. I was a kid. I was just a little kid. My mom was so a- fucked a- up. Everyone has those stories. I mean, like when I first had, got my dog, my, my, my white German shepherd. You had a white German oh, shepherd. Oh, she was sick. Wow, unbelievable. Dude, that's the best. My best friend ever, dude. She was unbelievable. Lived to be almost fifteen. I had her all yeah, through. They college. don't last long, man. Germans do. But we are. I was. I was away at college for like two, three weeks. We went out. There was a party going on next door, and I guess the dogs pushed open the door. We had like four dogs who lived with us, and they all took off. And Sierra, my little white dog, she was maybe three months. At the you got time. a lot of white dogs. I'm kind of concerned about that, but go ahead. White German Shepherd. Yeah. Beautiful. She took off, so it was like, I don't know, probably a week or so before we found her. We put signs up everywhere. We walked all around downtown, like had signs all over us. And all of a sudden, I came home one day, and there the dog was in the front yard. They, they had called, and uh, my roommate went over and picked it up. But then she got older. She got dementia, and she took off, couldn't find her. I called David Backus on game day. David Backus, and for people who don't know, He's like the dog whisperer. Like, they love dogs. Everyone loves dogs, but they do a lot of charity work for dogs, whatever. He and his wife. I said, David, this is game day. I said, David, I lost Sierra. He knew about my dog, whatever. He's like, all right, I'm going to have Kelly call you in two minutes. Kelly's wife calls me. She's like, send me pictures, send me this, blah, 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 blah. She sends out a uh, Amber Alert for dogs. Did you know they had that? An Amber Alert for I'm dogs. I'm disappointed in you. Why? You bug David Backus on a fucking game day about your dimension. Do- no, he got knocked out that night. I remember this. I think that's the night where fucking you fucked him over so no, bad. I think because of your goddamn dog. I think dog. he scored four goals Unacceptable, that night. Unacceptable. He scored dude. four goals that night. Now he, you set him back, dude. I think he'd he, still be like dominating right now if it wasn't for you. Here's here, the you rea- called. Let me see something. I lost my dog. No, the rea- I'm irresponsible. I have nothing to do tonight. Let me call the captain of the St. Louis Blues while he's playing a fucking hardcore probably a playoff game actually. <laughs> I'm going to call him and bug him before a game. Fuck you, Andy. Okay, so I texted him. He calls me right away because it was game day, trying to be respectful. Oh, so, re- the text. so respectful. Go the, find my dog, He calls boy. me right away. They send out the Amber Alert. It's the biggest, uh, like, thunderstorm going on all night long. I mean, just an all-out downpour. They find my dog under a bridge, like, 12, 16 hours later, and the dog gets returned home. But we don't get the dog back. They wouldn't have known who to contact if we didn't have the Amber Alert that went out to, like, every – I don't know how they do it, like, every vet, every dog person in the community. Does your phone pop up whenever the Amber Alert goes off? Damn right. It's a horrible feeling. It's a terrible feeling. Oh, yeah. But you wasted everybody's time twice. Why? You gave them an Amber Alert, not about a young girl in fucking Franklin County, (laughs) but about your fucking 18-year-old dog that you probably don't even care about, that you haven't fed in three weeks. come on. Things probably living under your fucking deck. And you call the fucking captain of the St. Louis Blues and have him go find it. That's fucking terrible on your part. Well, they found it. Good for you. Then it died the next day because it fucking hasn't eaten forever because you haven't fed it. Mm-hmm. 
I always went to the. You, all your stories turn into a negative for some reason. Why was that negative? Because you messed up David Backus, and then the, you he scared scored, her. You scared everybody with the Amber Alert because they thought it was a missing girl in Franklin County. Cam, he scored four goals that night. No, he didn't. Yeah, he, he got did. knocked out by fucking old boy from Chicago. I remember that. it was a wakey wakey night. Good one. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh during the playoffs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right in the middle in of the playoffs. 2015. David, screw dude, the, that's what screw you the did. playoff game that's tonight. What you did, dude. Get out of here, dude. Please. Go, go. So I saved Stella this weekend. You saved Duke. I would, I, I, I would I just need, throw I, this out there I right now. Anybody a, out there loses your dog, reach out well, to us. No, here's the difference, though, Andy. In my neighborhood, they want to lose their dog on purpose. So they come to my house so I can go to their house and hang out, and they can call me cute. Isn't that weird, though? I, dog, I need an apology from all these cougars. My dog is driving me crazy right now, though. It's just, it's such a little puppy. It's trying to adjust. Well, you know, we give went it from attention. Being, we went from being at our house to being in the bubble for three weeks in the hotel. Now we're back in a new house. Like, it, give it confused. attention. Give it, it attention. It doesn't know where it is. Do you love the dog? I do. Oh my God! He, if you guys would have saw how he reacted to that, when if somebody asked me if I love my dog, Dude, I, I bet do. Goes, oh, how dare you ask me that question about my babies? How dare you? I asked Andy that, and he looks at me and goes, nah, nah, "Yeah, I like it." Of course, I that love that poor my dog. dog, just like the other my dog. Kids, you can call David back us up. Kid, it's like my kids' dog. They love the dog. Oh, good. Give you have your fucking two-year-old kids take care of your dog. No wonder. It's a golden doodle, man. It's oh, like, they take it, care of themselves. It loves You're you right. back. It loves you back. They take care, take care of themselves. Care of yeah. If I had they my shower choice, of and the, go I would to the get bathroom like an Alaskan Malamute, something like that. Okay. You didn't have your choice. A, a, Who runs the show at your a house? Big ass guard dog. No, because I don't. No, want, what? I don't want a dog that sheds anymore. Oh, yo, with golden doodles on shed? Uh, no. They shit in the fucking house now. I guess in their crate. <laughs> Andy's probably feeding it fucking toxins. Why are you doing? I God, you're pissing me off. I'm gonna have to come over honestly with fucking Bacchus and his crew, and might take that dog away from you. What the and fuck? Have like Kelly a, Bacchus is gonna be banging on your front door tomorrow. Have like an intervention, <laughs> like like the, oh like the social God. services for dogs. Holy shit! All right, we're here to take your dog away. Good God, I'd be like, okay, this let me know, let me know right where now. he's gonna Good be. Lord. I'll come back and get him. The kid's dog. Kids, he's a cool ass dog. Here you go, Blaze. kids. Go ahead and feed it and take care of it. His name's, uh, it's your dog his now. His name's Blaze. His birthday's 422. I know. That's why you named it Blaze. I get it. It's yeah. weed. I know. Oh, I know. you don't know that. Oh, I don't. The kids named it. Blaze and the yeah, Monster Machines is my favorite. Yeah, my that. dog's favorite. I'm sheltered like you. My son's favorite TV show. I'm sh- I was sheltered. I have no idea what that means. That's a true story. I'm sheltered. Blaze man. and the uh, Monster Machines. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, Scott Mellenby. Oh, yeah. On this edition of the Cam Podcast. Pimpin'. Um, Dude, I'll never like when he played for the Blues, and he was great with the media. Like he would stand oh, there and yeah, talk dude. forever. Like, I mean, no, everything constructed yes. coming out of his mouth. Like, oh my god, processed. And he'd have a shake at all times. Yeah, and just one cut after another, up and down his face. Oh, yeah, one yeah. scar. I mean, I, I remember telling him one Bad time, it looked like a road map at one point. Like he had so many stitches. Yeah, he and so looks many good scars, though, dude. Man. You've seen him now. He doesn't age, man. He looks fucking no, good. No, that's what happens when you. Go to Montreal. You keep it handsome. Fucking a. That's what happens. Damn right. Like him and Bergie are fucking one-two punch up there, baby. They are one-two punch. Holy and now shit. they got it together. All the media, they're flipping out. Let me tell you something about the. Hey, all the media fans in Montreal, listen. You've got people who know what they're doing oh in charge, God, yeah. man. You can't flip a switch. When you're as bad as you were. That's Andy saying it. You can't just flip a switch. It takes time. True that. It takes time. True that. No doubt. To really become good again. Yeah. But as long as you have people who are in charge who kind of have a clue of what they're doing and how to formulate and follow through with an idea to build a winner, to build a roster that you know you need to compete. You, the hardest thing for a fan, man, I would never tell a fan how to act, actually, because the hardest thing for a fan is to be patient. Yeah. Fans, no, I know. They don't pay money to fucking, be patient. You especially know? In Montreal. Thank yeah, you. You're right. I'm glad you said that. With all those banners up there, man. We see it every damn day. Yeah. With the Blues fans here, man. How unpa- inpa- unpatient? Inpatient. Impatient. Impatient. I knew that. Yeah. Ninth grade, you're again. Impatient. I knew how impatient they were, and you can't chirp them for it, man. I was, they're, they're like, fuck this. Wait, what, what do you, what do you, wait, time out. I'm a fan. You chirp me for being impatient? I've been going for fucking 20 years, motherfucker. I've been fucking spending money and money and money on booze and go to all your shit. I support every fucking second of you. You telling me to be impatient? Here's the, fuck he, you. Here's the difference. What? When when John Davidson and those guys came here and told the Blues fans to be patient, I'm sorry, then hold on. They had all these young studs, right? Mm-hmm. And you know they probably weren't going to win the Stanley Cup, but you know what? They probably overachieved at times. Yeah, made the playoffs once, got swept by Vancouver. You yeah. were on that roster, I, I think. Made, I played a game. Yeah, mm-hmm. did you in the playoffs? Yep, game three. Oh yeah, I had like ten hits, but whatever. Did you? Was that good? Was it game three? Yeah. Okay. We so lost. anyway, yeah. So they got swept 
But you know what? They had a great second half. Chris Mason kind of like, you know, oh, played yeah. like, you know, Osh. 80 games in a row. They had Oshi and Perron and Eric Johnson, all these guys. Yeah, yeah. Actually, Johnson was hurt that year. That's what the year they traded for Cole Yakubo that, that <laughs> season. But yeah, Brad, Cole Yakubo should, should but, be happy with but that. But they had Brad Boys. They had all these guys, you know. So yeah. I think Big Walt was on that team, too. So yes, he was. anyway, um, you can be patient when you play an entertaining style. I think Montreal fans the last several years have been like, wait a minute, man. Like, we, we know our hockey. We've seen championship hockey. Oh, yeah. And what we're just, seeing right now, it just isn't it. Ain't it. Enough. They were getting beat up. They were small. They needed to get bigger. Boring. But you know what? Yep. Yeah. But yeah. you know, guys like Mellonby, Bergevin, I mean, these guys know that too. And it gets to a point where, you know what? We got to make some changes. So they did that this offseason, made some trades, signed some guys. And now all of a sudden, there's some serious momentum heading into this year with the Montreal Canadiens. Just how good they'll be, who knows? We're going to find out. But they're definitely going to be better than they have been. And they won't be getting beat up the way they have been either. Yeah, and it has nothing to do with Maxi Domi because I know Ty's going to call me and. and no. Fucking read me out. He on wanted that. to get out of there. I don't think he. I, I think you're I don't right think Max, Domi, and Claude Julian necessarily yeah, saw eye yeah, to yeah. eye. Totally. No, I know. So I think. That's all good. When you when you when you're a guy like Max Domi who understands the history of the NHL, whose dad grew up playing, and you're mm-hmm. playing in Montreal, and you're that excited about a change of scenery, to go to Columbus, that tells me something wasn't sitting right there totally. in Montreal. I completely agree with you. So yeah. we'll see with that with, with that and. And Mel's an awesome guy, and he answered every question, man. Like, and he answered the bell as a player. Do you remember him fighting that much? He not not at, later on because they always had three, four heavies with him mm-hmm. anywhere he was. Like mm-hmm. they had bolts and. Uh, but he fought you know, heavies had, too. He fo- he fought a bunch of heavies young, and he knocked the guy out. In like eighty seven, Jeff we, Jackson. God, he fucking knocked him out. And Mel is very stoic. Mm-hmm. And he never, even when he scored, he never fucking fist pun- none of that shit. Like he's just fucking the man, right? But when you're young... He would chirp Dan Cloutier after he scored. Oh, fucking right. But <laughs> whenever you're young and you buckle a guy like that, like mm-hmm. he kind of... His emotions took over, and I'd love yeah. to see that. Yeah. yeah. Because he's not that way. No. Like, I'm that way. No. He's not. Like, like no one Scott Mellonby, if you were to tell me, hey, there's a video of him doing that, I'd be like, show it to me. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I don't necessarily see like, him doing that. Oh, like, yeah. Oh, yeah. I he love did it. that, man. I love it. After, we, after, we ask him about that? knocking a guy out? Yeah, I know. And he's, again, the most, like, respectful. Like, yeah. He'll, man, I tell you this right now. Seeing him... Okay, we we know all the alumni. We know how everybody. Did you know he was your coach, by the way, or did you? Yeah, know I that? fucked that up because okay. I, I, I get confused. Just making sure you knew that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so even seeing Mel Man around all the big boys with the blues and stuff like that, when fucking Scott Melmy walks into a room, yeah, he's got I'm presence. I'm telling he's you right now, and I and I know it's kind of corny, but mm-hmm. it's but it's not. Mm-hmm. He walks in, you're like, fucking Mel, what up, baby? Like, oh shit, what's up? Like, oh yeah. Are you surprised? He was great to me. That he, that he hasn't gotten a GM job. Hell yeah. I mean, uh, I mean hold on. Let me, let me just say it. The cat this, from this guy Florida? Played, this guy played 1,400 games. Yeah. Motherfucking Then he was a scout. Then he was an assistant coach. Then he was player development. Everywhere. Then he's dude. an assistant like, GM. What else you need? And he has 1,400 games. Get on with and he has 1,400 captain, games. Captain, 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 captain. played in the Stanley Cup final captain, twice. Captain, captain, captain. Everywhere captain. Get out of here. So he was a I, finalist I, for the job in Vegas. They gave it to George McPhee. Hard to, I get that. Hard to chirp the decision. McPhee had a ton of experience, and they went to the final. Fine. But then he goes to Florida where Florida. he played, where he was the player of the decade in the 1990s, and he takes your team to the Stanley Cup final yes, and Captain. gives you some identity with the whole rat craze, and the fans know who he is, and you have no fans in the building. No, none. And – Listen, no offense to Billy Zito. I've know. known Billy for a long time. I don't know him. He's don't an know. agent. He cool I've cat? known Billy. Know. Listen. Whatever. So it's not about Billy. Yeah, yeah. But when you're in a market like Florida. Come on. And you're trying to energize a fan base. And you just. We got Billy Zito. Huh? Oh, cool. The you're agent like, that I used no, to love watching. The agent they've never heard. The agent heard I never of. heard of. Oh, cool. An agent. Yeah, you're you're going to do it. Sorry, Billy. I, I, so I got to be entertaining Billy. here. It's not about Billy. It's not Billy. about you. Like, no, we don't want Scott. Mel- Why would we want Scott Mellonby? He's too smart. No, he no, he no. was our captain. We don't want a captain. He scored thirty goals. He scored here. thirty goals here. He played fourteen hundred games. He's done every single job. He's a fucking shit kicker, and he's stoic. Wait, I, no. Let's we get that agent. Let's, let's get that let's get agent. The agent who can negotiate. Let's get that agent that <laughs> that hasn't played ever. And you know, let's do that. Anyway, instead, instead, that's all good, man. I'm not chirping him. I don't fucking know him. <laughs> but that's the direction of the ownership there, man. When my agent? No, but even. Uh, Although your agent was out of Chicago too, Billy Zito was out of. Chicago. Oh, he is. Oh, yeah. hey, Billy. <laughs> Sorry about that. I like you. No, I mean, we got to chirp no, you a little bit, homeboy. It's all good. Man. You want to come on here? I don't give hey, a fuck. Hey, you know Let's what? Go. He, listen, he and Yarmulkekalainen, 
who we know well, yeah. uh, are like best of friends yeah. in each other's weddings. He he worked okay. for Yarmo. Yarmo oh, gave him an opportunity. Guy. He's a very in smart Columbus, guy. and then listen, he did what he had to do. They won that's a championship right. in the American League with him running the American well, League team. There you team. go, then. And, um, There's always a reason yes. why, because you look at an enemy. So it's not like he's not. Is it qualified. obtuse? Should I say? Is it obtuse? Was I being obtuse? What is obtuse? Is that like I don't know? The 90s I saw it on a movie in the '90s. I think it was Shawshank, Shawshank mm-hmm. Redemption. I don't give a fuck. Was I being too obtuse when I said, "Oh, an agent, an <laughs> Did agent"? You just changed the word. I don't know. Is it? My point is obtuse. because I, I look. You look at him. You're like, "Oh, he's an agent," but. He was a part of a winning championship in American League. Mm-hmm. You got to look at his history. Oh, yeah. They don't just snap your fingers like, let's no. get the agent in hey, here. And last, he worked on it. Last okay. time I checked, you do. I'm inter- not a dick. You, you do. Inter- dick. You do interview, right? You do interview exactly, exactly. So I can't. I can't picture Mel and be going in there like fucking up an interview. No. Like can you picture Mel walking in there like. But I do think maybe they're scared of him. Yeah, I do think if you don't maybe. know, if you don't know Mel, he's not going to come in and like tell jokes. And no, he did st- on a podcast. Stand though. on his head. He was great on the podcast, but he's going to be personable and he's going to lay out. A plan. And you know what? His relationship with Mark Burge, I thought that would have helped him too because Burge and Joel Quimville are super, super tight. There it is. And Damn, Andy, you know how to connect the dogs. Well, no, except for the fucking dogs. And Scott Mellenby and Coach Q are pretty, they know each other pretty well too. Yeah. He right played down. for Q here in St. Louis. There's a, I, so I was, I, was a little, I was a little shocked. I was a little shocked. Yeah. So anyway, so he's what, on the podcast. When I first reported that Dale Townlin was, was leaving, the Florida Panthers. Now, Scott Mellamy was the first name that popped up in my mind. I'm like, wow, this might be his opportunity to get that job. I really thought that was he Pronger had... Was Pronger on there, too? Pronger's not there anymore. I know, but was Pronger he... got the hell out of there. I know. Okay. No, but was he on the mind maybe he would take the GM job? No, that's why he left. Because he couldn't get it. Because they weren't, like, ready to, like, elevate he, him and give okay, him so a... so he was in competition with Prongs, too, then. No, because he left bef- before the season even okay, ended. Okay, okay, yeah, sorry. Right. Yeah, Pronger left before they even finished the, you know... Yeah, he's doing the uh, season last he's year. Doing the, he's like, he's, he's, got, doing he's got well-inspired travel. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, bring them on, on board. Yeah, no shit. <laughs> Prongs, fuck. He's like, yeah, Let's you know, podcast first. I know. So, so anyway. anyway, Scott, people will enjoy yeah. Scott Mellonby, man. He's a he's just old school. Plus, his dad was, like, the executive producer of Hockey Night in Canada. He's yeah, got yeah, history. Yeah. It's kind of cool. You know? But you wouldn't think that he didn't come. He's not like an entitled like Never, NHL or like uh, uh, super respectful. School, Media baby. always loved him, man. He yep. is old school. He's cool too, and he will get a job. I always tell these guys who get frustrated, they get, get so don't upset. Don't be, don't be, man. Listen, you know what? When you get the job, it's going to be the right one. Exactly. Yep. When you get the job, it's going to be the right one. Somebody with as many people as he knows in the game, and I will tell you this too: the more success Montreal has. And with him being a part of that management team, the better it is for him. It's kind of hard hiring a GM the way some of these people look at it. You know, not every owner has a clue of what's going on in hockey. But they'll look at the organization that you work with and be like, you guys aren't even making the playoffs. You guys are struggling. Maybe you guys aren't making the playoffs, but you're not advancing. You're not going deep. Why would I hire somebody from that franchise? You know? Yeah. So I think Billy Zito do anything? And he did in minors. Columbus, you know, obviously won some. Was he? What do you have to do? With they, I don't know. Okay. Well, sometimes you got to know. Maybe anyway. you, know, you never know who knows who. Well, that's that's a it's a no. You know who knows who game in the hockey world, man. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I tried to become a GM and I was pissed off and no one helped me out. No, no. In, in NHL twenty, baby. <laughs> <laughs> you still play video games? Well, PS Five. There's gonna be, it's gonna be a big Christmas for Cam Jansen. Why? The first Christmas where I'm really asking Kate and Santa for a lot of shit. Past five years, I'm like, ah, eh, no, let's save our money. I, I got, we got to figure things out. Now I'm like, fuck it. I want PS5. I want a golf bag with Cam and Strick over the goddamn thing. I want 15 other. I want a Traeger. I want another smoker. I want another thing. I want a goddamn other thing that has to do with cooking, and I want a badass house. But that one's from Santa. <laughs> Are you asking Santa for yeah, all yeah, that for the house? Okay, good. I hope you get. Kate all gets that. everything else. Okay, good. And all right, so Kate, Scott Mullenby uh, uh, coming up here on the uh, Cam and Strick podcast, brought to you by CarShield and CarShield.com. 800-857-2481. CarShield.com. Mention the promo code Cam. You're going to save ten percent. Listen up. Easy peasy. Coverage isn't one size fits all, Cam. You got to structure it the way you want it. You want it long term. You want it short term. What do you want? Get a customized plan that works best for you. I saw these iced tea commercials, by the way. He's promoting Car Shield too, man. Iced tea on television. Have you seen those? I like iced tea. Yeah, it's yeah. good stuff. Well, I like unsweetened more than anything. <laughs> good one. Um, he's promoting what? Car Shield too. I saw his commercials, and what he talks about is absolutely true. You do get to pick and choose where you get your car repaired. Yeah. Oh, I can see what you're saying. Yeah. You okay. do 
get a rental car as part of your deal. Ooh. And they'll just show up with the rental car, man. You do get to pick out where you want your car fixed. That's right. Ah. That's right. That's right. Carshow.com. Mention the promo code CAM. You're going to save 10%. Again, 800-857-2481. All right. Bud Light Seltzer, man. I couldn't wait to get to this. You know they've got the ugly sweater, uh, ugly sweater packs now? No shit. Yeah, the ugly uh, sweater packs with like apple cider flavored and different things. It's the holiday season, dude. I That's know, how it goes, I man. I, I, t- I talked to my guy today from from uh, from AB. I'm like, dude, these a- ugly sweater packs are sa- so. We're gonna get some of those, pass those along. Yeah, I need to try some of them, bad boys. All our all our listeners, man. But again, Bud Light Seltzer. Check out the ugly sweater packs in stores now. And they got uh, on tap, by the way. At least in St. Louis, they have it on tap. They started November first. Really? They got the seltzer on fucking tap. Yeah, I see. At that. all the bars, they got mango. They got it all on tap. It's the best of the best. Black cherry, strawberry, lemon lime, mango, mango, mango. everywhere. Dude, people, mango. People sending, hashtag people that. People sending pictures last night from like lakes in Wisconsin. <laughs> like, Beautiful lakes. lakes. Good. Lakes, I'm like, how much that's my, where I was. What that's, do you do for that's a living? That's where I was on my boat during the summertime. I was on the boat. <sighs> In, uh, in, uh, stupid in Wisconsin. Thing to say. No, I was sick. It's it was unbelievable. Stup- so again, oh, you were driving that thing? Don't, no, don't keep going. <laughs> dude, just don't. So keep we going. appreciate Six. the pictures and everybody showing us their yeah, chills. I love them. that, dude. A bunch of those. I know. Yeah. We like it all, that. baby. We like love it that. All. So get your ugly sweater pack. I want to see some pictures with that ugly sweater pack yeah. from Bud Light Seltzer, baby. Again, BudLight.com, unquestionably good. How about Keep It Handsome? KeepItHandsome.com. Get that beard moisturizer. That's what I put on. Every single morning, I put the uh, the beard moisturizer mm. on. I put the head balm on. I do too. You I use do the, the head balm. Well, I put the beard moisturizer on because I actually have a beard. Mm-hmm. So when you have a beard, it's great. But if you don't have a beard like Andy, you can still do it too. Kate does it as well because you have the same beard as Kate, which is nothing. <laughs> which is nothing. Um, but yeah, no, it, it is. It, look, I'm telling you, you smell sexy with it. You smell actually. Time out. You smell handsome, and you're like, what does they smell like? Well, you smell your hair. Find out for yourself. Like have your wife smell your hair. She's like, oh my god, like it's, it's like a. It's like an aphrodisiac, if like you, no other. If you don't know what it smells like, that tells me you're not keeping it. You handsome. don't get it. I smell. I smell. My, God, my hair smells great. Me too. I just smell. Kate, everyone smells me. I told you I love everyone smelling Kate's hair, me. and I'm like, oh, she that's how. Beautiful hair. That's how we found the dog. I actually put some head balm on. I put some beer moisturizer on. You didn't find I'm shit. I'm like El you Stella, 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 Stella. I saved lives. I told you I saved. The, they made a fucking parade for them, for me, dude. <laughs> dude. I'm waving everybody. I'm like, I, actually, I didn't do it as Kate. So I'm going to get a hell for it. But on the other hand, I still was associated with the dog. You did nothing. What do you mean? I brought the dog to that. We fed the fucking dog. You <laughs> posted something on something. Dude, yeah, and I say, got people out there, mm. created like a, a, res, a rescue you're team. You're Batman, man. A rescue search team that we created you're in you're the bad. poor part of Ladue. And we found Stella, who's now home where sh- uh, she should be. Good. Keep it handsome. Check out all the hair products. You got the hair gels and everything else you need to have that sick ass flow. Make sure you look good in time for the holidays. People yeah. taking pictures, man. You want to look nice this holiday Damn season. Damn right. A lot of right? pictures. A lot of pictures. You probably haven't seen your family in a long time. You want to look good. You want to smell good. Do your thing. You feel good. You look good. You smell good. You feel good, baby. All right. Let's go. But putting the beer moisturizer in, that's just half the battle. You need a hoodie. Yeah. Hey, listen, Christmas season, what better stocking stuffer is there? Well, people look at me when I have the fight ugly. Then a fight ugly hoodie. Well, they they ask me what the hell it is, and I'm like, dude, it's a it's a anti bullying campaign that we do, and I explain the hair product with it, but they're like, fight ugly and keep it handsome. I'm like that's a cool motto. I'm like, I know, and we do we we don't like boys. Mm-hmm. We don't deal with it, and if you do, and your kids or yourself or whatever you're at work or something, just text me. Find me on my, my Instagram, Andy. You know, Andy, because he's probably not going to text you back because he's probably acting like he's saving dogs somewhere. But I'll help you, and I'll talk to you now. They've done it. And, again, I might be jammed up because there's a lot coming in, but I'll help you with that. We don't fuck around with the bully shit. We all have been through it. Andy acts like he hasn't, which is, like, so fucking surprising. So surprising to me. But I kind of did. I told you I got pissed on in the fucking bathroom. We all know that fucking story. Like, it happens to everybody, and it could ruin you and hurt you and not build your confidence up. Talk to me, man. I'll talk to you. You know where my Instagram is. You know where my Twitter and my Facebook. I'll fucking reach back to you guys. We don't put up with the bullying bullshit. That's right. And you know what? A portion of the proceeds from these Keep It Handsome Fight Ugly hoodies go back to the Montreal Resource Center that uh, that does fight anti-bullying and fights bullying. It doesn't so fight anti-bullying. It supports anti-bullying. Yeah, it supports it. It fights bullying. Yeah, it fights bullying. Right? Did I yeah, say that right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so check it out. Uh, keepithandsome.com. You can buy your hoodie at Amazon as well. 
Fight ugly. I want to see people wearing that hoodie, man. Support a great cause, and it's a sick ass hoodie. You're gonna look good, really good, and you're gonna smell good. Well, at the chicks same are time. gonna come up to you at Starbucks and be like, "What's yes. that mean? Keep it Can you protect me?" I'm like, yeah, yeah fuck yeah, yeah. I can protect you. Girl. No doubt about that. Although I am married. All yeah. right, uh, Bellman and Bellman.com in Troy, Missouri, Cadillac, Buick, GMC. I'm looking at that Escalade in time for next winter. Maybe in time for the spring. You never know how fast we're gonna get that. Cam's looking at the Buick Enclave with captain seats, third row. Plenty of room for all your dogs and cats. You can save more dogs. Put them in that. Uh, I'm getting a bear too. Fuck this enclave shit. Enclave of yours. You're getting a bear and a lion. Oh, a bear. Seriously, like Mike Tyson used to do. He had a tiger. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> That's the only one you missed. It's in the cat family. It's a cat family. Could you imagine having one of those? No, nah, I don't know if I'm ready for that. Like I, I watch things on YouTube about it with this cat. Uh, not a cat, but this dude has a you know went to uh africa and has these all these lines that he brought up and he does this and like they're so happy and cuddly <laughs> i want one andy it doesn't work that way what dude. was the crazy uh in dubai you could go do that you was, fucking fly around now, was, a guy in a lamborghini's gonna have a cheat in this fucking what was the famous shotgun. uh tv show what's it called on uh on netflix everybody was watching oh, it at the beginning the, of the quarantine that weirdo fuck and, and now he's his in jail weirdo chick and, yeah, and carol Cat, baskin they and all suck. That stuff. i don't know they were so weird i couldn't take it i fucking i, I don't like animal abuse i hate it lion if, king if, or if what's you, it called? If tiger killing, king if, tiger king if you're killing tigers in like india because they're not in africa i think they're in india if you're killing tigers for sports, like I, I, I want to smack you in your fucking head. Like the tigers are sitting there, like you oh hi, feel bad. And you fucking kill a tiger, like that's majestic. Do you feel shit. bad when one of these people who are like are raising those type of animals or are trying to kill one of those animals and they get attacked and they get killed? Do you feel bad for that person? No. Well, yeah, I mean for their family, yeah, but mm-hmm. like that's what you're risking. But if you go out to, if you go on these safaris and you kill a lion. And then you post about it, like, look, and the lion was just sitting by its pride, just like, because they sleep 20 hours a day, and you just kill it, and you're like, look at me, I'll, I'm going to fuck you up. <laughs> like, i fucking sorry. Okay. All right. I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I know. Hey, I, I, I'm that, sorry that bugs too. me. And I don't, I don't know. I don't mean to be like that, because right. I'm not a, but All right, let's, don't, don't, don't post that to All me. right, back to Bellman. In Troy, Missouri, you've got the Cadillac Buick GMC yeah. on one side. How about Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram on the other side of the I street? Like All SRTs, in Troy, man. Missouri. Yep. Get that Jeep. Jeep can be fun all four seasons, man. Yeah, man. How many cars can you say that about? Not many. And you can put your hockey bag back there. You can still look sleek. You can mm-hmm. park in Clayton. You can do this. You do that. Like, fucking Jeeps are fucking badass. No, no, not Wranglers. The Cherokee SRT. Oh, like, yeah. Shit like that. The Wranglers are, like, for high school stuff. Oh, that's that. cool, though, still. Yeah. Oh, Wrangler? What? Yeah. Dude, Wranglers are sick. For they what? Make, they for make... what? No, wait, time out. For what? What are they good for? off Are you going off-roading? Are, are you an off-roader, Andy? Mudding. What, in Clayton? Mudden. What, in poor part of the dude, they have off-roading? Go, you going mudden? Mudden. You don't know. Just get out of here. Dude, so so what are they else they good for? <laughs> yeah. Tell me. Dude, Can they, they pull shit? No. no. You get through snow? Oh, cool. You can't do it with the other Jeep? They and both in the have spring and the summer, the top goes down, man. It's cool. Your, your legs are hanging out. I can have a sunroof. They have the new Jeeps a now. The, uh, what do they call the one? God, I should know this. Oh, that I'm sure you that has like a, uh, a pickup truck bed to it. Yeah. All right. Have you seen it? Yeah, man. You know what they I'm talking like about. Shit. The SRTs. The are Renegade, I think it is. Dude, they're pretty sick. Get uh, yourself I really a Jeep drive a Wrangler. Where it drives like a Cadillac. Well, you can get it. You can get, listen. That's the best part about Bellman. You, know. you have options. That's what I'm saying, baby. And the customer service is. I the might best not you're like everything. I'm not gonna. I don't kiss everybody's ass. Like if I don't like a Jeep, I don't like a Jeep. But I like the Jeep Grand, Grand, uh, Grand Cherokees. I just don't like the Jeep. You Wranglers. like the XRT. Yeah, they're fucking awesome. Yeah. They get it. Well, you think, oh, there's snow. I can't drive my Jeep Grand Cherokee. Get on with yourself. Well, you can drive your Enclave, too. Yeah, I know. I'll take a Buick. Mm-hmm. <laughs> a Buick. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so check that out, Bellman.com. And again, if you have a used car, you don't know what to do with it, guess what? They'll buy it for your, from you right now. Yeah. They will buy your car from you. And then you can turn around and buy one of those beautiful cars from Bellman where you get the best customer service and your wife can go there and feel safe and drink the water. Oh, God. Okay. And go do her her no, car shopping. There. All right, Scott Mellonby. He's safe. Over fourteen hundred games, and he's still making it happen and impacting the National Hockey League. And is with us now, right here on the Canvas Rick Podcast. Yeah, Scotty, that's him. what's <laughs> up, <laughs> big dog? Hey guys, how are we doing? What are you, are you doing? Are you, where are you at, homie? Are you working out? Are you ice fishing? What are you doing right now? <laughs> my, I played golf the last two days. It's seventy degrees here. Oh my, where's God. here? Where are you at? I'm in Hudson, Wisconsin. Hudson. Why do I always think you're in Minnesota? I think you have well, a Minnesota because, area code too for your phone. Yeah, right? my, my when I took the job with Montreal years ago, we had uh, we we bought a place in Minnesota at the time on a lake that I had for about six summers, and then I sold that a few years ago, and then um, 
So uh, that's the number. It is a Minnesota number. All right. And, and you know, I'm 30 minutes from the XL, so I'm I just across uh, the river. I had no idea. Oh. Did you know, Cam? What? As Cam always says, whenever we watch guys fights, he's like, yeah. and he throws lefts. Are you left-handed, Scotty? No, he's not. I'm le- I, I write with my left hand, but I th- I'm all messed up. Are we Are we taping now? Yeah, yeah we're yeah, taping. We're going. Going. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm, listen, I'm, 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 Weird. I got, I, I, <clears throat> excuse me. I write left handed. I throw a ball right handed. I kick a ball left footed. Oh my. Um, what about golf? Yeah. So, what about golf? I go, I golf right, but I play tennis left. Um, I, I, like, I shave, brush my teeth left, but I, but oh. I, but I throw a ball right. Like, if I was going to, if I was going to, if I was, if I was in a, in a tilt with Jets and I was hanging on for my dear life, like I would have been, um, if I wanted to throw one good punch, I'd, I'd want to throw a right, but I could, you, throw I, I could throw some left. I could throw some left. Well, I, I saw it. I saw it. It's all over YouTube. And you You're fought weird, Probert. Scotty, you fought some way. guys. You knocked some guys out, too. Oh, yeah. But I've never heard of that. Like, I'm left-handed. You write with your left hand. God. How could you yeah. write with your left Tennis. hand, but then throw with your right hand? That makes no uh, sense. And, and if I, and I'm not, and I, and it, the funny thing is, is people say, oh, well, he's kind of ambidextrous. I'm really not. Like, honestly, yes, I can you kick are. a ball. <laughs> you are. Well, but, but I can't, but I can't throw a ball with, like, I'm not, I, I'm not the guy that could throw with my left hand and look natural. You know what I mean? So I throw a ball with my right. But if I tried to kick a ball with my right, same thing. Like, I, I have to kick a ball left. It's it's weird. Scotty, I'm a beautiful athlete, and we all know that. If you wanted me to throw a ball with my left hand right now, I will look, he look ridiculous. You can't say not it. Not yeah. doing it. Yeah. Not doing yeah. it. I would look oh, ridiculous. How bad is your handwriting? Well, I know. I Oh, mine's terrible. Yeah, well, terrible. try your right hand, Scotty. I That's the problem. The, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Jance could attest to this because he may not remember, but one of the most embarrassing things I went through as a coach, and I coached Jance for at least a year, maybe two, but um, was when I had to write something up on the board, like a lineup or write something because my, my, like, honestly, like grade four printing, like it just looks compared horrific. to Andy Murray. Compared to uh, just no, everything coach with Davis Pay. Cam no, doesn't even know when you were his coach. No, Scott. I do. Like he completely forgot. No, did a, you forget God, about that no, or what? I knew that he. No, no, no. I, I, I did. Everything's somewhat of a blur. I do remember him going up there and writing things down. And when he didn't put my Jansen on the what? the right side on the fourth line, <laughs> I just stopped paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> well. Yeah, I didn't write a lot of things on on the on the board because Hitch probably would have ripped my head off if I didn't ask permission first. You know, so. How was he dealing? How was dealing with him? Like he, you know, oh, Hitch was good. He was yeah. good. I'll tell you what. I learned. You know, everybody talks about all oh, Hitch. He's he's hard. He's hard. Listen, he's he has his way. But I'll tell you, he's. Uh, I learned a lot from him. Um, he was very open too with his experiences with Hockey Canada. I think his downtime between Columbus and St. Louis, he spent a lot of time in Detroit with uh, with Babcock and, and a lot of uh, Hockey Canada stuff that he was doing. So he shared a lot of that stuff with me that Hockey Canada was preaching and and some of his terminology. So he he was good. I mean, listen, he, when you got to be around people every day, nobody's yeah. easy. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, no, he, yeah. trust me on that, Mel. I don't yeah, know whether it's teammates or coaches or as a player or i mean you, you know you have your you have your moments where you're you're not at your best and that's just part of the process i don't know why i thought you were coaching with davis Payne. did i get that wrong you got that yeah, wrong no, too? i did i did. Okay. I did coach with painter for one year okay. and then hitch for hitch for another year i got you. So I, got I, know which, one year. I know which way jance shoots though because in the alumni games i was always feed, alumni stuff i was always feeding him for one timers see Andy, and how'd that go if mel's on my fucking line we're like, we dominant kid i know just, brag no, about me he's a, be, he's a better player now than he was when he played the I'm league so Scotty. good now that's, when Mel's that's on my side. Oh, baby. Hey, but what's it like, Scott, when you play 1,400 games? Which God, that's like, I mean, is that five times your career? <laughs> Shut up, Like, Dick. it's amazing. Go, go. 1,400 games. It's such a time. long time, Scotty. Like, I don't know if we'll see a guy play 1,400 games ever again, honestly. Maybe not. Especially with the money yeah. these guys make. Like if, you're, like, if you're playing 1,400 games, you're making a lot of money. Or you're bored. Because yeah, you're a really you, good yeah. player. Especially yeah. with the way these well, guys are getting paid, but like yeah. then you go into coaching Scott, and like you're like the second assistant, or maybe you're whatever, and you're kind of like being told what to do after you've been a captain yeah, and been a guy. Boy, like, yeah. Was that a tough transition for you? It it was, yeah, it was tough. I think that people that know me know that uh, I'm, I have a strong opinion, and I and I've always kind of oh, yeah. been, you know, leadership kind of follows you around, and mm-hmm. it's not like you try to be a leader. But for me, being an assistant was 
tough just in the sense that, you know, you kind of have a say in, in everything, but you really don't. You're not really in charge of, you know, who plays with who, who, who goes in certain situations. You have some say in it. But um, so, yeah, it was difficult. And, and you know, I, I see guys like, you know, Kirk Muller, who played a ton of games, too, and he loves coaching. I think you have to love it to do it. If you are, are coaching today's game with the amount of video and the amount of stuff you have to do and you and you aren't loving it then it's just not for you and for me i just for me i just didn't enjoy it it just i was i was uh after playing a lot of games putting the skates on every day to go out for practices and stuff it just for me just wasn't wasn't the fit so um i'm glad i'm lucky that i got a chance to do it and do it in st louis where i was living um you know but i i I realized it wasn't going to be really the way i wanted to go and uh i love you know i like doing what i'm doing now and, and scouting and and helping you know, try to put teams together and things like that. It just kind of fits me more. I don't have to be at the rink all day, every day and stuff oh, like that. It's too much, right? Like, even as an assistant coach, things like that. Like, it's just, you're tra- you played 1,400 games. Now you're yeah. traveling again. It's like, God, can't well, I can't just know, kick Jen, my feet up. Hey, hey. Hey, you get a you, the worst. The worst is when you is when you lose a game five to one, and then you get on the plane and you got to watch it again. Oh my <laughs> god, know? that's another like, thing. At too. least as a player, you get on there and you have your meal and you you bitch about the loss a little bit, and then you you know you're you're getting yourself ready for the next day or the next game or whatever it is. But it's uh, yeah, it's 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 a grind, man. And and nowadays, I mean, the coaching, the level of 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 what they do the video and the amount of preparation and stuff, it's just, it's off the charts. Um, so you better love doing it or it's, you're going to be miserable. Yeah. And you're an executive now working with Montreal, but being on the bench and being in the room on the plane, like what'd you think of the, uh, of the younger player, like the modern day player nowadays versus when you played, like, was that difficult or did you have a, was that okay for you? Um, I, I would say, no, it was okay. I mean, I, listen, I, I've kind of always tried to have the philosophy that if you're not willing to, to change with the way things go in life, period, you know, it's time to get out of whatever you're doing. So, you know, um, but yeah, it's it's different for sure. I mean, listen, I started my first year in the league when Mike Keenan was my coach and, and you know, it was tough. I mean, uh, you know, uh, it was, uh, the, you know, the brow beatings and the sh- little little shove in the back here and there from the coach was commonplace. Now it's uh, you know I don't even want to get into that because I I have no problem with with uh, anything I went through, but I went through some tough stuff too, you know. And um, that's just the way that's just the way the culture of hockey was back then, um, you know. So it's I don't I don't want to say it's gotten softer because I think it's gotten probably the way it should be. Like it's you know. The players, I've always said, and I, you know, when you play 20 years, you consider yourself a lifetime player. So I'm a more of a player than I was a, a coach or even in, in management. And I, I've always felt like, you know, Bob Goodnow used to say the players are the, the labor and the product. And, you know, they're the ones that give the rest of us jobs. So, um, you know, the players should have, have uh, be treated the right way and, and uh, have the power. The Cam and Strick Podcast is brought to you by Car Shield. You know, nothing more frustrating, Cam, than when that engine light comes on and you know right off the bat you're going to have to spend thousands oh. of dollars <gasps> to repair your vehicle. Call 800-857-2481. Mention the promo code CAM mm. or visit carshield.com and use the code CAM to save 10%. Yeah. That's carshield.com. A deductible may apply. Save yourself money. Cam. Sign up and get your coverage now Cam. with carshield.com. Cam. Now back to the Cam. interview. Yeah, yeah, you're right. And, and you know what? When you say it, it's not necessarily getting softer, it is. Because if you look, <laughs> go to the 50s, to the 60s, to the 70s, to the, I mean, yeah. like every single generation, every single decade, it does get, hell, 30, yeah. 40 years ago, you're slashing each other in the face before you even yeah. fight each yeah. other. Well, I think it's just part of, of society in general. It's just a little bit different now, right? And that goes for, you know, even with our kids and things like that. Like it's, you know, um, I remember I see it, you know, one Christmas present and I know with our kids, we gave them five or six or seven, you know what I mean? So, um, it's just, it's a different time, but I, I still think it's a great game. Um, we still, I think have the, have the best group of athletes out there. And, uh, you know, I, I was fortunate to play during a period of time when there was, you know, with a, a lot of expansion and the way the game was played, um, it's hard to play 1400 games in any year, but I think now, 
you know, because of the speed of the game and, and, um, you know, I was always in good condition, but it's, uh, you know, it's demanding in a different way. Now it's not as demanding with the flashes and the punches and the, and, and that kind of stuff, yeah. but it's, uh, the speed of the game now is, it's just so fast out there, um, that, you know, like when I was playing, you know, was a lot more hooking and holding and, and things like that. So I was able to survive for a long time. You gotta be in shape now. Everybody has to be in tip top shape. It's like oh, yeah. a, it's like a competition oh, yeah. in the summertime, Andy. No, it yeah. is. It is. It, it is. is. So all right, let's go back to like where you grew up. Like what kind of what kind of household was yeah. it? Your dad obviously a legendary producer for Hockey Night in Canada. So I want to get into that too, but just in terms of like how you grew up, Scotty, how many siblings, what was life like in your household? Yeah. Oh, it was great. I had great, you know, great parents. My mom passed away uh, a long time ago. Actually, when I was playing with the Blues, she had cancer and died. She smoked a lot, but uh, no, great, great upbringing. Great parents. You know, I'd say upper middle class. Um, you know, not rich, but but you know, comfortable. And um, I had one sister. Have one sister. Um, and you know, just a, a great upbringing. I mean, did the did you know all the sports you could do, which I think was great. I mean, I played everything. I played baseball. I didn't. I never played football. My mom didn't want me to play football, but I played everything else. You know, tennis, basketball, volleyball, baseball. And I think it's great to have that cross. Cross. Maybe that's why I'm I'm so mixed up with my left hand and my left foot, and my right hand. But, You're all, yeah. um, but it was it was great. I mean, and you know, a lot of people think because I grew up with my dad was executive producer of the Boss of Hockey Night in Canada, television wise, that I was, you know, going to games all the time. I really wasn't. He took me to a couple of games a year. Had some insights to you know they used to do those things in the summer like showdown and some of those skills. Some of the star players that I did get to go to a couple of those. Um, but other than that, you know, it was, he didn't. He, I think he didn't want to spoil me with it. You know, I think he he wanted me to to, to understand if I got to go to a game that it was a, a treat. You know, it wasn't a, it wasn't going to be a weekly thing. Um, and I just I loved sports. I was obviously loved hockey, but you know everything golf. I mean, I I, I I'm a, I'm a I'm a sports fanatic in some ways, although some of the sports it's died down because you get busy with your with job and everything else. But um, you know. Um, my dad was a good athlete as well, so you know a lot of a lot of athletics for the Melonby family. Oh, well, I could see it when you walk into a room. You walk into a room, everybody stops and stares at you, Mel. Just so you know, you're intimidating <laughs> as fine as shit. You're intimidating as yeah. shit, and I love it. But like yeah. you mentioned, playing every sport, and I always tell everybody, all the fans, they they always ask, what, what, what do you should. Get your damn kid into everything, everything. And I say soccer to baseball to wrestling to all that stuff and become an athlete and figure out what you want to do and then go do it. If that's what you've hockey is your main thing, you have to play other sports to become an athlete when you're young. Am I wrong on that? I think you're absolutely right. And I think that you do get to a point, certainly, like you said, you get to a point where you're going to start to have to to spend more time at one thing but that should be at 14 15 16 go. not at not at 8 9 and 10 then and, mm -hmm. and i think i think for the development of your athletic abilities to do different sports hand eye some sports are a little bit i mean they're all hand eye to a point but some are yeah. are more so uh some are more physical some are more uh, uh skill based and i think just to let your brain soak it all in mm -hmm. and develop um, it's like a computer program, your brain, right? To let it just download information. Muscle memory. Yeah. Muscle yeah. memory. That's all it is. And I, I think, yeah. I, listen, I think, I think different sports bring different types of competition too. Like in terms of yeah, how it, you know, sure. and, and I think yeah, that can, that can, that can benefit you too. All right. But I got another question though, about your dad though. Like, was he bringing you yeah. to the studio? Like, did people was know, he, was not, he a shit like, kicker did people like you? around the neighborhood? Like they know who he was. Like, was he a big deal? And like, like when uh, I talk to players, like whose dads played in the NHL, they talk about that advantage like you don't, there was no advantage there for him being Not, connected to hockey i don't think so i mean i i loved hockey i mean you're in canada too right so um you know it's every 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 young man and and, and girls now too but that was a, that was hockey night in canada saturday night and everybody was hockey i could see that in some some areas maybe more so in the states as as hockey was growing you know um you look at the kachuk boys and them being around the rink all the time because of their dad maybe they would have maybe if, if keith wasn't a, a hockey player maybe they wouldn't have got as into hockey who knows but um no yeah, i don't think for me it made made a big difference to be honest with it and and as far as his celebrity goes 
he wasn't he wasn't an on camera guy, so right. it's not like people oh, okay. recognized him. He was, you know, he was an executive producer, so producing, directing. Um, I would have people say to me, "Oh yeah, I saw your dad's name on the credits after Hawk, because his name was always on there at, <laughs> at the end of the Hawk in Canada, stuff like that." But yeah, he but wasn't he... he wasn't a recognizable guy face wise because he wasn't on camera. What about Don Cherry? Like, do you remember the first time you met oh, him? Yeah. And oh, like, yeah. like, was he well, around you your good... entire life? I, I, well, my, I'll tell you a good story about Don Cherry. So my dad started in as executive producer in 1967 he hired cherry in around 1980 i don't know the exact date but my dad is uh, you know i'm not sure that's always a good thing to say he's responsible for for don cherry but don was it is a good thing yeah great for hockey night in canada and um don don uh my dad hired him and about two three weeks after don started he was so raw on the air and the cbc which is you know the yeah. canadian broadcasting oh, company yeah. was was so proper they went to my dad and said and said ralph you have to you got to get rid of this guy he's 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 horrific and my dad had a lot of cred at the time and so he said okay he says well you guys can let him go but if you let him go i'm going with him and and they said all right well we'll keep him for now and they kept him and, and he became a star so um don always after that was always every time i was playing a game and he could uh oh look at that melody look at that look at that yeah. line change what a I great know. line change <laughs> <laughs> yeah. mel you know, so he, he did that to me too I, like honestly like i i didn't grow up in the, in the canada the the scene with hockey night in canada every saturday night but we watched the blues and stuff like that but Don Cherry was always not, he's by the way he's a friend of the show he we had him on a, a couple months ago but yeah he just he figured out who he was and he did it yeah. and people yeah. didn't like it but it it worked overall it just absolutely worked yeah well he was a star he's a Canadian legend and uh you know he's been a good he's been uh my father and him have been you know my dad then helped him put together the the grapevine which was a show that ran for many oh, many years yeah, yeah. that was my dad produced that show so i went to that i was actually a, i went to that in my teen years when they started doing it. and then i was on the show i don't remember what year it was but probably around late 80s early 90s but uh, don's been a very close friend to our family for a long time yeah he uh oh he was so nervous too when he started that show, I mean, he talks about your dad holding his hand, Scotty. Oh, yeah. Like, just, yeah. To, just to get him through yeah. the first couple of shows, like, he was so nervous. Like, it's yeah. just crazy. But he's such a legend, man. I mean, you're fortunate to be able to, to you know, be exposed to some of that, you know, exactly. as a young guy. Yeah, well, I remember, I do remember uh, going to some, like I said, two, three games a year at, at Maple Leaf Gardens, Hockey Night Canada, and Bob Cole, who's also a legend, who oh, just yeah. retired, but uh, my mom and boss, so my mom and I would go, and afterwards we'd go into the hot stove lounge, and my dad and Grapes would have a couple of beers, and my my mom and and uh, Bob were both smokers, so they had, they had Bacardi cokes and smoked their cigarettes, and Bob had one of those you know those long filter things that would stick oh, way yeah. out and have the cigarette stuck in the end of that thing, and I'd be sitting there, I was you know. I don't know how old I was, 14, 15 at the time, ready to go home. I was falling asleep. But, uh, yeah, I remember we'd be staying there for an hour, and they'd, they'd you know, have a few drinks. And it was, uh, yeah, it was pretty pretty fun. You didn't even know probably at the time that you're just – you're looking at like no <laughs> legendary yeah, no. shit, yeah. Mel. Yeah. And yeah, even, yeah. even when I was young, in the middle of Missouri, where we didn't have an NHL network, the Blues were a big deal. I would my dad would give me Don Cherry Rock'em Sock'em fight tapes for yeah. Christmas and shit, and I'm watching this fucking guy. And eventually, you got to get he, he had Ash and Aaron Ash and myself on there like three times, and like just goddamn that guy, he entertained you, he called you yeah. out. But if you look back on YouTube and watch some of the stuff he did, he called the guys out so bad it was, it's unbelievable yeah. how, what he got away with. It was great. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he's, like I said, he's, he's, uh, he's a legend for sure. And growing up in St. Louis, I don't know, Jance, but you had to, you, you had, you got to listen to a legend for a long time with Dan Kelly. Yes, yeah. right. Oh yeah. Right. He's, uh, my father, uh, thought very highly of Dan and Dan did a little bit of hockey in Canada, uh, way back as well. But his, he's got one of the greatest voices of all time as far as I'm concerned. Oh, well, I would just real quick on, on the Dan yeah. Kelly thing. Well, you got John Kelly and you got Patrick Kelly right now too. And he actually just, Help me 
uh, uh, engineer my radio show today. So he's working for the, the same radio station as me, and, and uh, we work together. So funny how that all works, man. It all comes down. Yeah. I know Andy's giving me a look like, what do you care? I'm just letting him know. I mean, Patrick's a good he, kid. Fuck he, off. He's trying, he's trying to get some brownie Sorry. points from somebody. Ooh, ooh, Patrick, what's he going to do for me? No, it's good. Anyway, no, it's good. Geez, Sorry, Andy. Andy is a great kid. Dick. He is a great kid. All right, so you'll find yourself in Philadelphia... No, like, were you ready to play in the National Hockey League? You had just played two years at Wisconsin. Like, were you ready for it? Um, you know, that's a great question. I, I, um, I think I was ready in some ways and not ready in others. You know, I was very, very fortunate that I went into a good team that had really, really good, good people as players and had strong leadership, you know, guys like Dave Poulin and Dave Brown and oh. Tim Kerr and Mark Howe and um, Brad McCrimmon. Uh, these guys really took me under their wings and really helped me. Um, you know, Mike, uh, you know, Keenan was hard. was very hard on me. I, I think, um, I don't think, well, I know he, he told me several times he didn't really want me there on the team that I was Clarkie's boy. So I don't think he wanted me to be there, but Ooh. Clarkie wanted me there. So I, I think because I had really strong leaders that, that really, they liked me. I was quiet. I didn't come in. I wasn't, you know, loud and, and obnoxious. I kept my mouth shut and worked hard. And I got in some fights early. I didn't know what I was doing, you know, fighting wise, really. I'd never really been in, I'd never not worn a cage before. So, um, you know, I got beat up a little bit early and uh, my second pro fight cam nearly broke my nose real bad and stuff like that but you know i think the guys saw my willingness to you know i was just going to do whatever i had to do to, to to stay there you know um I, I wasn't there just to fight for sure you know i was a guy that they thought would become an offensive player but uh you know when you see and jance you know this when you see a guy that's not maybe expected to fight he gets in a scrap you know it's it's does a lot for your team and stuff so i think i think i won my teammates over really quickly which i think uh um helped me survive because it was uh yeah it was it was tough at times it was tough it was you, tough you at played times. in college young. though like like you went from co like college to yeah. being a heavy Hey, let's talk about the new Bud Light Seltzer. Oh, yeah. It's an easy-drinking, hard seltzer that comes in four delicious fruit flavors. Mm. Black cherry, Ooh. strawberry, yes. lemon lime, and Cam's favorite, mango. Oh, With mango. only 100 calories, 5% alcohol, and less than a gram of sugar, mm -hmm. you might as well have a few tonight or this weekend. Mm. Go to BudLight.com to buy Bud Light Seltzer online. Must be 21 years of age or older. Bud Light Seltzer unquestionably good yeah now back to the interview like why did you go to college in the oh well i i know why well, you would want to go to college but god you would have been a great <laughs> junior player you probably would have had 40 scraps for three years straight and yeah. you wouldn't have got caught by cam neely yeah well you know i i i um the reason i didn't chance is i was a really late i was a late bloomer so i was always a kind of a scrawny kid and and uh uh, I was always maybe in the top four or five players on my team, but I wasn't that kid at 12 that everyone was saying, 11, oh, look at this guy. Look at this. So I was a late bloomer. Once I, you know, at, at 16, once I started drinking some uh, some beer once in a while, I started to put, fill out, put a little weight on. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, and then I then I think the, um, the competitive, pissed off, uh, testosterone kicked in at around 16 my midget year and that's when I started to really you know I got to be a bit of an ornery player at times yeah. as well and, and that just kicked me to another level and so I was drafted by Windsor um, but I was pretty much focused already on on going to want to go to college and I think my parents also felt that was you know I think if you told my my mom and dad at fifth when I was 15 16 that I was going to be an NHL player I think they would have said yeah sure you know, it wasn't, we weren't that family that you see everywhere now where everybody thinks their kid's a pro, you know. So, um, yeah, so I just, I was a late bloomer. And uh, that, that from age 15, 16, 17, I just, like I said, I got, I filled out, I got stronger and I, and I got, I got meaner and uh, figured out that that's kind of what I wanted to do, you know. Scotty, um, I hope yeah. you had a blast. I hope you had a blast in Wisconsin. I hope you did <laughs> because I played in Windsor. And if you would have been there, you would have been the biggest dick on that block, and you would have had a 
badass, unbelievable time living with billets and things like that. But it all worked out. It's all good. Windsor was a blast. I can't Dude, believe you me. had you had a bunch of NHL players on your Wisconsin team though. Like you had you guys you guys yeah. were stacked. Well, I was there. I was there two years, and in the two years I was there, the guys I played with were um, Paul Ranheim, Steve Tuttle played for the Blues. Yeah, he did. Uh, Dave Maley, uh, Paul Stanton, Mike Richter. Um, Suter, Mike Richter, Jeez. Gary Gary Suter was there my first year and he left. Yeah, um, yeah, a lot, a lot of guys. Tony Granado, Tony Granado, wow. Granado. Yep. Listen, yeah, Scotty, no I did my research, man. Still not Windsor. I, listen, but Steve Tuttle, by the way, went from <laughs> two. He went from two goals to like thirty-one, like at the year after you left. Like, was he that good? Was he that much better the next year? Holy shit! Uh, but maybe opportunity. Maybe I was getting in his way. But maybe you know, no. He, you know, when you get to be, if you're a decent player, at, you know, and, and it was easier to score goals back then, but, um, you know, Tuts was a good player. He was a good skater. He was smart. Yeah. And you get to be a junior, senior in college, you know, you're, yeah, you're one of the older guys. You should be, yeah. yeah, you should be a bit ahead of, uh, you know, there's freshmen that are going to come in, you know, that are 18, 19 years old that may end up being better pros than some of the seniors that are in college now, you know, for sure. Yeah. But, that that few years, couple of years, is a big difference, you know. So, um, but Jance, my dad is from just outside of Windsor. Oh my so God! He's, See what he's, it from, means? he's from Essex. He's from Essex, Ontario. Oh so, yeah, Essex County. Um, no, I know exactly where he's at. Time to talk about our boy Dan Bellman. Bellman dot com. That's with two ends, not one. B e h l m a n n dot com. Hey, check out the new inventory. Check out the pre-owned vehicles. You looking for a Chrysler, a Dodge, a Jeep, a Ram? How about a Cadillac or a Buick GMC? All in Troy, Missouri. Get your new wheels in time for the winter. Mm, 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 mm. Now back to the interview. Damn, yeah. Mel, what the hell is wrong with you? Hey. If we can go back in time. <laughs> oh, God, no. No, you, but Wisconsin's yeah. a great Wisconsin, state. Wisconsin, come on, out, no. It worked out for both of us, Jets. Yeah. And you, I know. Hey, and I you know. had a legendary coach there, Peter Sauer, too, man. Like, yeah. I mean, yeah. You know, a, but you're playing 30 games a year, though, Mel. Like, you're playing 30 games a year. You got a cage uh, on. I 40. Play okay, 40. 40, 40 games. Come on. Cam. I'm sorry. I'm just you want trying... him to go back in time and yeah. switch it? Do you think – no, wait. Let me ask this question then. Do you think if you did play three years in juniors, you figure it out, you're kind of on your own because in juniors you – Well, you would have played 1,500 just games? Listen to me. No, just listen. No, 1,800. <laughs> if you would have jumped into the scene. And of course, you adapted great. We all know that. I, I still would have made it. No, I know. But would you yeah. – <laughs> okay. All right. See, I'm no, done I, with this I, question. I, no, but it's no, but it's a good it's a good question because I actually have have had this debate with people yeah. in, in the past because there's a you know, listen player development is a really important part of what we try to do. We want to develop players, right? Mm-hmm. We draft them, and we need to invest a lot in trying to develop them. However, I will say this, you know, I and maybe it's because it applies to me. You know, I wasn't the, the greatest skill guy. I had guys come to me years later saying, "Oh, I wish I didn't quit when I was 15 and start smoking cigarettes because boy, I was better than you when I was 15." You know, I I I have a belief that I was wired a certain way, like a lot of people are, like Cam Jansen was coming out of St. Louis. And, you know, I think I overachieved in my career and Jansen, I say the same thing about you. I mean, you just to do what you did is really impressive. But the where I was going with this is that I believe that if you take 20 guys, yeah, or say 100, you take 100 guys and you send them to college and 100 guys and send them to junior, and let's say 20 guys out of those 200 make the NHL, I believe if you go back and you switch them, I believe the same 20 same guys that make the NHL. Because I believe, I believe you get to a point where it's it's in your heart and it's mm-hmm. in your balls and it's in your head. But they'll be a lot and... smarter because they went to college. <laughs> they would have learned, <laughs> they learned yeah. not to spend their money on stupid shit, this, that, and the other. Yeah. But yeah, there's yeah. there's pros and cons with everything. I just I just wanted to see no, yeah. some junior fights. And I, and I get asked, you and I, yeah, and I, get, I get asked by people, well, yeah. you know, what do you think the best path is? And I, I think there's there's different paths. You know, maybe if you're maybe if you're uh, a little bit behind the curve physically, maybe college is the way to go. You give yourself a little bit more time to develop. Yeah. Um, you know, you have a little bit more practice time, a little bit more time in the gym. Uh, maybe, but if you're already shaving and you're 18 years old or 17 years old, maybe you go to junior. You know what I mean? Hey. So. Yeah, if you can press, if you can bench boy. press six hundred pounds like Jans could when he was fifteen, <laughs> you go play junior. You go oh. throw people around. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly why I went to junior, not because of me not getting college. Can I, college can I get back to Keenan? Jans, Jans, who are Jans, Who are some of the guys you fought in junior? Who are some of the guys? Oh, you McGrath. Guys? McGrath. I mean, Mc, just McGrath. you know, Mel. There's guys in juniors that were so goddamn tough that no one knows they about. Never made it. I know. Yeah, 
They're, I mean, they're, they're fucking fighting these guys, and they're going toe to toe, and they're beating the. F- and you're like, and then they just n- nothing. They just couldn't make that jump. But some of the guys didn't make the jump, and their their names are pretty popular. But God, it was still the Wild West back then, man. And honest, it was the last era of it. Yeah. It's yeah. fun, man. It was weird, like just leaving and getting up there. It was a blast, but there were some there were some shit kickers up there. And they weren't they weren't limiting the amount of fights when you were there. Oh, no. now they limit them right out. Oh my god! Well, well, now, now they talk about now they talk about no hitting. But yeah, Mel, you keep mentioning Keenan and like, he's calling you like Clarky's boy. And like, I didn't. Do, he do, like you, do you have do you have resentment towards him? Like, are you okay with it? Like, what's your take on on him? Like, we always we have to ask everybody. We have we so many him guys on. on here who played for I, him. You know, I don't. I don't have resentment towards Mike. I uh, Mike was hard on me, and and there was times I would have liked to have, uh, uh, you know, taken my stick across him. But I mean, you know what? I also I also look back and I and I know that maybe a part of my ability to play as long as I did was I, I mean, listen, I already believe I was already mentally tough anyway. Mm-hmm. But after I survived my first year with Mike with 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 uh, you know School of Hard Knocks, you know what? I I felt like I could survive anybody. So, you know, maybe, maybe he helped me in my career. I would say that he did. And I, and I know one thing, Mike away from the rink or off the ice, never, I never, you know, like he would, he would play some head games with you, but, but as far as belittling or demeaning or, or like, like saying something about your family or, you know, I believe that everything Mike did, he did to win. And he was trying to make me and anyone else on our team, you know, as, as, and he would use any means to do it. He wanted to win and he, he had a very successful career and he did end up winning a cup in, in New York. So I don't no, I don't have, I don't have, um, uh, animosity or whatever that just, you know, it's not like I was the only guy going through that. That's the way it was. Yeah. And I'm sure Jance has stories of a coach somewhere along the line that called him, you know, something that he didn't want to be called to try to get him going or something. I mean, we, we all have a story, you know no, what I mean? We I'll all, tell you this we right all have now. a story of a coach that was hard on us. Uh, no, never mind the coaches. Fucking Andy chirps me every goddamn day as a business partner, and I got to deal with him every day. He's fucking Mike Keenan of the business world. Well, why, why did he not like you? How the fuck does Mike Keenan look at you, six two? You got the mullet. You're fucking jacked. You're stoic. You walk in a locker room. You're already a leader, right? Yeah, when you but, walk. In. Why did he like yeah. you? you? You know why? I think I think Mike pushed buttons of guys that he knew would respond. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, he did it to Rick Tockett. He was hard on. Uh, I mean, listen. When he went to St. Louis with Shanahan, he was he, he was hard on him. Um, and oh, I think that Bronx, Mike. Yeah. So so we had we had Doug Crossman on our team. Okay, just to give you an example, great player. I mean, great player. Cross, you know, his heartbeat never got above a hundred, but he was a great great player. But Cross, you couldn't like Mike didn't say a word to Cross because he knew it wouldn't bother him. Well, you had Crossman in St. Louis too. You guys know Cross. And and Mike Mike never said a word to Cross because he knew he, he wouldn't bother, Cross would just be like yeah whatever like he wouldn't get anything more out of him I think I think it was a sign that Mike believed in you you know I look back on it now because he knew if he if he got under your skin that you would go out and get in the fight or you would go out and run mm-hmm. somebody over you go yeah. and and he knew he needed to do that with guys like Talkit and myself and you know um, so I think he pushed buttons with the guys he knew he could get them to another level. All right, but yeah. Mel, like the '87 Stanley Cup final, like you're playing against Edmonton mm. and all yeah. those, you know, legendary players. Like, how do you reflect on that? Just in turn, I know you lost. It went to seven games, but just having the opportunity to compete against those guys, like, how do you look back on that? Yeah, it's. I mean, phenomenal. We we had a great team, um, but obviously, you know, they were a better team. Um, we were down three one in that series, and and uh, you know, when I look back on it, I mean, at the time, you know, you're 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 doing it. You're young. You're you're excited to be there. You play. I think you. I think I look back on it more later. At, at when you see all these guys from that team that went into the Hall of Fame, they, I mean, I don't know how many of the guys they got. I mean, Curry, Gretzky, Anderson, uh, Kevin Lowe's going in now, Fuhr, uh, Messier. I mean, the list just goes on and on. Coffee, mm-hmm. you know. So, um, you know, it, it, it was uh, it was a great series, and certainly would have been a great one to win. And you know, when you're when you're 20 years old and you're playing in the Cup Finals on a, on a good team, you think you're going to be back there the next year. And unfortunately, nope. it doesn't always happen that way. I get back there one more time, and um, I think for me, 
the disappointing part is is not having won a cup in my career. You know, it's one game, one period. You know, oh we're down God. two one in that game late in the game, and they score, and it's three one, and it's over. And and uh, uh, that's the disappointment to me is it just it it changes sometimes the perception that others have about you, um, whether you won or didn't win. You know what I mean? You Sometimes know, unfairly, I think. You know, oh, yeah, Mel, you, like, listen, it, it, it's so true. And like, you and I have talked about this. I mean, there's guys that didn't have close to the career that you had. I mean, that may have played fewer than 100 I games, know. but they were in the right place at the right yep. time, and they're considered a Stanley Cup yep. champion. And you'll never have that on your resume. Like, uh, But you had a great career, and you were a great player. You played a long time. Does that still bother you? Like, you think about that, like, yes. as a player? Yes. Yes. It still bothers me. And I, you know, we're excited about where we're at in Montreal right now. Um, we've done some good things. We've got some good young players coming, and I still want to win a cup. And the day that I do, you know, for me, I think it will be more gratification from acceptance that I know people can look at me now and say, well, he won a cup in management. At least he won one. Right. Um, I think that for me, however, it's like Bergevin won it in Chicago. And I went to work for Berge a year or two later. And I said to my, I, I was in his office and I saw the picture in his cup on the thing. I said, hey, Berge, I got to ask you a question because I wonder this. When you won with Chicago, and I, that's all I said. And he said, no, Mel, it wasn't the same. Uh-huh. And what he meant was that, you know, we dream about winning the cup with our skates on. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And that, listen, that's not taking away, not, not you know, I mean, I, I want to win it. I want to hold it above my head. I never have done that, and I would, would never do that until I'm the guy that won it. But um, it, it's a huge, huge, I'm sure you can tell, it's a huge, huge void for me personally that I wasn't able to win as a player, but I still want my day Um I want my day with it. Dude, you're going to have a great time with it, and you are going to win it. You did all this stuff, and all of a sudden you're in management and you win it, and you have a, the cup for a couple of days. Yeah, you'll definitely enjoy that. But I do want to get back to, real quick, you're talking about that. Just, I don't know. I have to bring uh, Gretzky in the, in the 80s. Like, what the, like, how do you compare him to anybody now? You're, you watch hockey every fucking day. You're in the loop on everything. Like, just explain the difference to everybody, please. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, it's it's just such a different game now, right? Like we used to we used to finish our checks in the offensive zone. So let's say I go in on, uh, you know, on uh, Vince Dunn, and I take him out. He's the left defenseman, and I'm the right winger. I just had to kind of beat him back up the ice. So if he was taking his time coming back up the ice, I could take my time coming back up the ice. Mm-hmm. It was just different. So the time and space that was created for for really good players. Like imagine Connor McDavid now. And and lots of guys. I mean, lots of good, really good high end players. You know, imagine if you didn't, if guys didn't back check the way they do now, and and you created that that ability to to come in across the line and and cut to the middle or do a turn. Like Gretz used to be great at that turn up, where he'd turn up and then hit a late guy coming. And I mean, that kind of stuff just isn't there anymore. So it's much much harder to uh, to create points. But this is one thing, Chance. I always say when I'm asked about comparing eras. Okay. I believe that if you take the best players from the 50s or 60s or or any generation and you put them in today's game and you give them the one-piece light sticks and you give them the light skates and you give them the training and the nutrition Mm -hmm. and everything else, they would still be the best players. No doubt about it. Yeah. Yeah. No doubt about it. Well, and the training – at, at a young age, too. Maybe like, some of the heavies can't deal with the big, big boys. But how these kids are, yeah. are exposed. You mentioned Mark Bergevin. Listen, and I covered him as a player when he was here, but like he's got that reputation being the, the funny guy. Like He dresses loud. Jacked. And... You know, takes a lot of heat, man. I mean, the 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 media there in oh, Montreal, God. like they they don't yeah. like they know what you're doing and all. They probably know somebody's reporting right now, Mel, that you're talking to us right now, like in Montreal. <laughs> they, it's they, all good. They love us up there, but they're reporting that right now. But what should we know about Bergy as a manager that people may not know, like in terms of how he runs meetings and how he runs an organization? Like, is he the same personality, or does he flip a switch well, and become the executive? Yeah, yeah. Ber- it's obviously it's a, it's a very stressful job. Uh, being a manager of any team and obviously in a market in a Canadian market, it's tougher. And in, 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 you know, Quebec, you've got, you know, two languages and two, two sets of media and it's, you know, it's, it's, it's pressure, but, um, Burge is, I think from my experience, having played with him and seeing that, that, that constant, uh, you know, joking around, always the guy that would, you know, the prankster type role, uh, 
when I started working with Montreal, he has a much tougher side to him from a business uh, acumen than I realized. Like <laughs> yeah. he's, 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 he's hard. Like he, you know, he's, he, he takes care of business and he's, listen, whether you're le- having to let somebody go or tell a player he's traded or tell whatever, like that's not easy stuff. And, and, you know, he just, uh, he's very, he's very, uh, you know, he's, he's, business you know he's business now the other side of Burge is still there you just have to be in tight with him to see it as much as you know mm-hmm. uh as you used to but but the other thing i'll say about Burge to guys is if you ever can work for people that are really good people that you know care about you and your family that's that's oh, yeah. the one thing that people should know about Burge is that uh he's hard and he's you know he's tough and he's you know but he cares about the pl- our players. He cares about our training staff. He cares about our coaches. And I know he cares about me and my family. And that's, that's nice to work for people like that. And he doesn't give a shit about me or my family. I got two <laughs> cats and a dog and he doesn't hey, give a fuck. Hey, he doesn't know their fucking name. You should names. see how Mel dresses now though. Like when you got the Montreal job, you knew you oh, had to take it up nice, a notch though. though. Like, no, now he's oh, like, oh, he's Jesus like GQ Christ. inside. Oh yeah, oh, well, yeah. it's a fashion no, I, show in Montreal anyway. <laughs> King Louis the Fourteenth did I've that. Put on, I've put on the COVID. I've put on the COVID ten or fifteen. So Have I'm not you? Oh, some of those I don't future now. That. But I'll tell you a story about that. I've, uh, years ago, Marty Lapointe, who works with us, great yeah. guy. Oh, yeah. wow. Marty, uh, uh, Marty said, "Come on, come with my suit guy. Well, let's get. We're going to get you a Montreal suit." And I said, "Okay." So we go and I, I get these pants on and this and that and they measure me up and then they tailor it and stuff. But a couple of days later, we go back to pick it up and I try it on and he says, how's it, how is it? How's it feel? And I said, well, I feel like the pants are two sizes too small and, and two inches too high up. And he goes, perfect. It fits perfect. Let's go. <laughs> That's what you want. <laughs> so it's like you got to sit down carefully so you don't split your pants. And, oh, you know. I can't do it. You know, I can't do it. I wear sweatpants. You got to look the part in Montreal. There's no doubt. Yeah, I'm right. All right. So when you go to flight, do you identify yourself as a, as a Florida Panther? Like people may not realize you were named the player of the decade in yeah, the right. 1990s and you were the captain there and obviously went to the Stanley Cup final, like you mentioned. Like, do you identify as a Panther and the whole rat craze and all that stuff? Yeah. I guess we should have had some better players if I was the player of the decade. <laughs> but, um, I, you know, that's a, that's, a, that's a great question. I would say probably. I think that I had. Uh, my best personal success years there. And it was a special time in my life. I just got married. I just started having kids. Um, I took on a real leadership role. We had a lot of success early, you know, um, so things, I've got great memories about those early years uh, with Florida. Um, so, but, you know, i tell you what, when you're drafted as a flyer and, and you play five, six years there for Ed Snyder and Bob Clark, you know, I always kind of jokingly, refer to it it's like being in the mob you know and as long as you kiss the ring you're always part of it Mm -hmm. and um um i that was that was a special organization as well obviously you know it's uh uh, mr snyder's passed away and gone now and Mm -hmm. clarky's not as involved but um you know, Philly was a pretty special place for me too, being drafted. Yeah, there. but you go to Florida, Florida though. I know we, had, Florida. we had Ron Hextall on. Though, we had Hextall. Like, who else we had on? I think we've had oh, Eric Lindros. Oh, we've had, we had all the boys. Yeah. But you go down to Florida though. You go from yeah. f- from Philly, but you go to Florida. Well, was, was it was it loosey goosey? Like what? Did you have I a went, lot of? Went, go yeah, ahead, explain it. He went to Edmonton. No, I know. And then they got him a '93 expansion draft. I get that. We're not going to talk about the Edmonton. We don't have enough time. We're going to have. I think. I think. I think Jance when you say was it loosey goosey at the time expansion teams had been getting beaten down bad, yeah. like Ottawa, San Jose team. It was, it was a death sentence. So I thought I was one of the last year of my contract. And I thought, you know what? I mean, I'd scored 20 goals a few times, but I'm like 27. I'm, I got picked up an expansion. I'm like, man, I might be out of the league soon. So there was a tremendous motivation. I thought I'd probably play half a season there and get traded mm-hmm. to a, to a two team. Yeah. Um, but I think the character of the, and I think that's what Clarky and Bill Torrey really did was they, they, dra- they, they drafted a lot of guys that had, that were a lot of uh, character, hardworking, yeah. uh, grinding kind of guys. And then, and then we had Beezer and Beezer was, you know, Mark Fitzpatrick was our backup and he played really well for us too. But Beezer was, Beezer was tremendous. And, uh, Roger Nielsen, uh, it was great. It was a good team for him to coach. And, and all of a sudden we just, we had, I, I believe no matter what market you play in, your leadership core and, and the work ethic and stuff is driven by them. And, um, totally. you know, I think, I, I don't care if you're in Florida or you're in Edmonton or you're in Minnesota or Montreal, wherever you are, 
your 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 leadership guys are the guys that are are, are going to not accept, you know, are going to be trying to fi- find their way out of the forest when things are not going well. And no we, doubt. we had we had a lot of those guys. We had a you know Brian Scrooge was the first captain and I was the second captain, but we had that first year. We had five, six guys that could have been named the captain of the team. It was that we had that much uh, uh, leadership. It, it, but it is different in different organizations. Like you go from a Lou Lamarilla era down to, you know, kind of kicking your feet up and, and something new. Like it, it, it is different. You and you guys. That's when Florida was at its ab- absolute peak, in my, in my opinion. But the big, big thing with you, and anytime anybody thinks of '96. Florida Panthers, they think of you, and they think of that little precious rat that you killed. Him. <laughs> I can't believe you did that, Scotty. You're such a good guy. You step on a rat. The thing just wanted to be a team pet. Explain that whole damn scenario, because that was great for hockey, man. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. I mean, we we were the we were not the primary tenants of the Miami Arena. Um, the Miami Heat were, so we, they built us this. They slapped up this drywall and made this tiny little dressing room for us and a tiny little medical room. And it was just a, I mean, it was, there wasn't much to it. Believe me, it was a bare bucket. Um, and that area down there was a little bit, um, you know, it wasn't uh, the nicest spot in town. So yeah, there was, there was always rumors about rats in the building and this and that. And this rat came down the hall. It was before our home opener in 96. And a couple, a couple guys jumped up on the benches and I, we were just getting ready to go out. And I, we were just getting ready to go out for the introductions, you know, to do the inter- introductions at the start of your home opener. And I would always, uh, with about four minutes left uh, before, you know, you'd go out at two minutes, four minutes left, I'd stand up and I would put my stick down on my knees like you'd be at a face-off and I rocked, I'd rock. I, that was just kind of my routine. You know, everyone's yeah. got their little thing. Yeah. And and uh, Jance was, you know, in punching the wall or something. But, yeah. um, I'll stick and down I, the Yeah, and the rat, the rat came in and it just kind of, it was weird. It stopped, it looked around the room, and it beelined, like it just beelined as fast as it could run right at me. And I was standing there, and I, honest to God, I was probably scared. I was like, "Holy shit!" And I just, I always say it was my 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 best one timer. It was a Brett Hall type one timer, and I just hammered it, Leaned and it flew, it. it flew about ten feet, and and hit the wall, and was dead. And there was a big blood, there was a blood spot on the wall, and uh, our trainer circled the blood spot, and put R.I.P. Rat, and um, um. After that, he, people started throwing rats on the on the ice, rubber rats. He grabbed a rubber rat and stuck it right there, and it was there for the next you know couple of years in our dressing room. This rubber rat, um, and then that night I got two goals, and we won. And Van Beesbrook said I got a rat trick, so that's how it started. Ah, uh, well, how, how the, besides how the, the bubonic how plague the fan, that started how too. How the fans find out about it? How the fans know? <laughs> well, that's how they found it because Van Beesbrook was interviewed after the game, ah, okay. and he said. Melody got a rat trick and he told the story. So it was in the paper. So a couple weeks later, I scored a goal and somebody threw a rubber rat on the ice. Well, then it just started to snowball from there. And really, the throwing of all the rats, oh. like when anybody scored a goal for a lot of the year, it was just when I scored. But then as we got to the playoffs, that's when you know people started throwing them after every goal. They made it. Did they make a ton of money? Were they handing that? them out every game? Were they handing them? Or they selling or they them? They selling them. They should have sold them. Yeah, I should have got in on that somehow. But they were—I uh, think they were—they were selling them. But it was funny because I remember Wayne and Marty Heizinga. Wayne was the owner, and Marty Heizinga, tremendous people. We've lost yeah. both of them in the last few years. But mm. um, Marty was—they used, used to sit up behind the net, a uh, couple, of, not right behind the net, but over a bit, about two, three rows up. And they, the PA announcer was coming on saying. Uh, we got a hold of this video. It said, you know, anybody f- caught throwing things on the ice is subject to eviction. And the camera was on Marty, and she had 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 like this big bag full of rats, and she's oh. chucking them on the ice. It's the owner's wife, right? So it's like, I guess they're not going to kick her out. Oh, that was <laughs> such a great publicity I stunt, man. I know. I know. And that you know was what? the best. And it put, years. And it put the, pl- uh, the Panthers on the map. You know, like did you get caught? Did anybody bullshit you? Any psychos? Like, how dare you? kill that rat because that no. rat probably just wanted to come over and hang out no. with that mullet you had yeah, on no no but it was it was a it was a, it was a weird karma because uh going back a couple of years when i first went to florida my wife and i had just got married mm-hmm. um we ended up she got pregnant um after we got married <laughs> and uh we were renting a house and we were renting a, a condo not a house but a townhouse in boca raton florida 
Boca Raton, which I didn't know at the time, stands for rat's mouth. And we ended up about three months into our lease having a rat problem, uh, tree rats that have really long tails that swing in and get in your attic and stuff. And and we actually ended up leaving after three months. And I just said, we're leaving. My wife's pregnant. We're, we can't deal with this. Um, so the rat thing just in Florida just followed me around. I know. I know. And people still talk with, about with it to diseases, this day. Probably, <laughs> probably. Hey, you know, Scotty, listen, man, as long as I've known you, I don't think you and I have ever talked about this. But, you know, doing my world-class research and, and coming across like this lawsuit that you had early in your career in the bar fight, <laughs> Mel, like how come this has funny. never really come up? Like, well, tell me what yeah, happened yeah. in this bar. Well, basically, what, yeah, yeah. basically what happened What's was the story was in, here? Yeah, I was in, a, I was in a, I was up North. We used to say up North, we're going up North. Muskoka. Toronto, that's a, Muskoka. Muskoka's right. And <laughs> I had, I had uh, a couple of uh, buddies that I grew up with that they they had, places cabins up in Muskoka so we would go up there once in a while a couple times a summer so we were up there and you know the reason you don't hear a lot about it it was 1989 and the media coverage of things wasn't I mean obviously it got out in the media but it's not like today where it would be mm-hmm. plastered everywhere on social oh, yeah. media and things like that uh, and basically what happened was we were at a, we were at a bar there's about seven or eight of us um, and I was 22 23 at the time and a, a, a friend of mine uh, you know got in a a bit of a scuffle uh, and it just escalated and they didn't kick anybody out and it escalated again. And then all of a sudden a, a fight broke out and I, and I uh, cut, there were a couple of guys on my buddy. So I jumped in and grabbed one of them. And then and someone from that party of people broke a cocktail glass oh, and God. started swinging it around and it took a chunk of my arm out. Oh my God. Damn. So it severed, uh, severed four tendons and four. So, you know, the flyers were great about it. They, 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 you know, I was kind of portrayed as coming the, to the defense of a friend, and you know, so they, they kind of try to, you know, paint it like I was a hero type of thing, which I didn't. I didn't start it. I just did what you would have done too. Like, you know, it was a bad situation. They should have kicked people out. They shouldn't allowed it to to escalate. Um, yeah. Because you know, it kind of, it kind of, it kind of from the time the, the first scuffle started it was probably an hour later where this whole thing, you know, blew up. Mel, and, uh, dude. I get it, dude. Trust me. But, but then, okay. So then, like, there's a lawsuit going on, and there was some misreporting, right? Because I know you kind of got pissed off. You had to address it a couple times. Yeah, I know you did yeah. to the media even back then. So what? What was the lawsuit all about, and why did it drag out as long as it did? Well, because that's what that's what. Ha- so in Canada, and I can't speak for the the laws now or or the laws compared to the laws here. If the, if what happened to me would have happened in the U.S., you just settled. Probably, right? It probably would have been a settlement. And I would have yeah. had five million bucks. In Canada, the way it, it worked at the time is you basically can sue for career uh, for for loss of earnings. Mm-hmm. So at the time, you know, I was making like 160 grand, and you know, so, so um, it was I was taking on a, a large ins- insurance company. So when I first got into it, I didn't really know how it was going to go. I was I was I'm getting I'm getting uh, uh, legal bills every month. And so they're just dragging it out as long as they could. I, I was, a, I was, a, I didn't have saved a half a million dollars by, by the time, it, well, oh. maybe by the time it settled, I had, but I was making, you know, then my salary started going up, but I, you know, they were just trying to, to bleed me. And it was very frustrating. It was frustrating for me with my lawyer because I felt like I was being taken advantage of because I didn't know the system when I got involved in it. And uh, although I probably would have done it anyway, but no one knew what where my career was going to go. How was I going to recover from the injury? Or what, where were my careers going to go? So basically, we ended up finally, I was in Florida and, it, and was playing well and it signed a good contract. And I wanted it just to be over. I wanted my money back and I wanted the nightmare to end. And uh, I had about a half a million bucks into it in legal fees and and they we settled for uh uh for for basically 600 grand so, so even the re, even the report i'm reading that you settled for 750 whatever i mean it's probably not even it's accurate still, it's no, the, what, even. no the judge no the settlement was for 800 and something thousand uh-huh. but then but then the judge uh shaved that down because he said that i was 25 percent responsible for because i got involved so he shaved it down. Oh yeah, it was, it was about five something. It, it basically covered my my legal. Cost. But I could tell how pissed off you were because people were saying that you were like trying to recover like six million dollars or something, and you kept no. you were saying back then, watching some of these interviews, it's not even close. So that had to be like. I can imagine, like, in your situation there, Mel, people are saying stuff and you really can't say anything, right? And, and yeah. you're hearing all this. It that- just didn't work that It just didn't work that way in Canada. Like, back then, 
and again, that's 19. It's a long time. And again, then until around 93 or four or five, this the lawsuit, which went on for about six years. Mm-hmm. And we finally had a three, we had a three week trial, but um, yeah, it was, uh, it was, yeah. I mean, it, it was, it was frustrating because I knew that in the end I wasn't, going to make the kind of money that like I wasn't going to get millions of dollars from it and uh, um, but in Canada back then if you if you got in a car accident and severed somebody's arm off it was worth a hundred grand if you made someone uh, uh, you know paralyzed it was 300 grand like they there was basically a menu of what things were worth but what i was suing for was the fact that of potential career earnings Mm -hmm. that's why i had a case you know um, and I think one of the reasons that they settled when they did finally is because the salaries were starting to go up so much and I had scored 30 goals in Florida. And so I think they were maybe starting to get concerned that the numbers were going to get, uh, you know, cause, cause we had already won in court, but they appealed it and it can take up to two years for an appeal to happen. Jesus. So, hey, how's your hand yeah. though? Now, like, and how was it the rest of your career? Like, did you ever get like full range of motion? No, feeling no, all that? I, I no, no, what? I because I because I suffered my ulnar nerve too. So if you looked at both my hands, and to be honest with you, I started throwing less in fights a little bit more because I didn't because have the strength. To, mm. I didn't have the strength to hang yeah. on as well. So I have about three and a half fingers that that uh, the other my baby finger and half my ring finger are basically numb, mm. um, and I probably have about seventy five percent of the grip strength because you you have atrophy of your muscles when you have a nerve injury, right? So. Mm-hmm. Um, and the nerve will grow back somewhat, but it, but, but sometimes it doesn't grow back that well. And so, yeah, no, it, I just, you know, I just had to kind of adjust and make do and, to, um, just, you know. you're just in the wrong place. Wrong. Like, no, I yeah. could have had that happen to me. Oh God. I mean, yeah, well. so I, I getting your ass, I remember getting my ass kicked in, in, in Windsor and things like that. It's bizarre. But on the other hand though, as a story that was a big deal, like that, it's not that big of a deal. Like you stuck up for your buddy, and the guy slashed you with a fucking empty body. Like, what do you yeah. do on that? Well, luckily, luckily, it didn't end my career because I no played. Shit. I was three years pro at that point, so I played, you know, seventeen, eighteen years after that, and and that would have been a tougher pill to swallow if I had not been able to come back and resume my career. You know. Oh um, yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah, it's just cra- that's, but you that's, did. That's crazy. But you, you did. did. You did. And you I did. and you but you did. And fourteen hundred games, and whatever. You, yeah, exactly. And you landed here <laughs> yeah, in St. Louis. I don't know what your expectations were when you came to St. Louis. But you played on some good teams. I got to ask about playing awesome, with man. Big Walt and playing with Pavel Dimitri, like the three of you guys as a yeah. line. Like, like yeah. who, who's the most talented player you played with, Mel? Like, I mean, it, it, like, where do you put Dimitri on that? Like, he's up there, right? Yeah, he was he was a hell of a player. Um, well, first of all, when I first got traded to St. Louis, I was ready to, to move on. Florida, things were not going great, and the team was struggling, and I was ready, and so I was thrilled to get a chance. To, to go to a good team you know they'd won the president's trophy the year before and quite honestly i, I in my mind i started i mean i think i had four goals at, at the, when i when i got traded there like i thought i was this was it i was probably mm-hmm. done you know so when i got to st louis i thought well maybe i can win a stanley cup here and finish my career that year and but you know what joe i got to give joel quenville and mike kitchen uh, uh, Jimmy Roberts was here at the time, but you know, Joel believed in me. Like Joel, Joel valued what I brought, and he put me in a position to succeed. Uh, and obviously, um, you know, I also took advantage of that. I think when I first got here, I played with Mike Eastwood and Corey Stillman came in about a month yeah. after that. We were we were kind of the third line on that team, uh, and then I ended up playing with Pav and Walt. You know, later sometime the next year, we kind of got put together, but. Um, it was a thrill. I mean, you got McKinnis and Pronger on the back end. I really thought that we we were we would we would win a cup in my you know. Then I then like I said, things went really well for me. Uh, I think I had eight, eight eight or nine goals in twenty twenty five games then that year, and I got re signed. And um, you know, I thought we would win a cup with Al and 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 Prongs. You saw what Anaheim did with with Niedermeyer and Pronger, yeah. and just having one of those guys on the ice all the time. But then they ran into a lot of injuries, right? Like Al got you know, his shoulder the one year and prongs had that arm thing. Um, and then his knee. And it just seemed like, it seemed like those two guys, um, were not healthy together, mm-hmm. uh, a lot for those last few years that I was there, you know, like well, they were at times, but they were always, someone was coming back from an injury too. I, and I'll had the eye injury thing. And, you know, so it just was kind of, wasn't great luck. Plus you had Dallas, Colorado and Detroit. Very, yeah. very relevant. 
right yep. next door yep. to you. So that's yep. it. Just, but Pav, but Pav was Pav was yeah, he was a great player, and to get a chance to play with with him and Walt, I mean, it was. You know, I mean, I, I I was a smart enough player to know what I had to do, and that was when I got the puck, you get it to one of them, and you know, um, it was the chemistry for whatever reason was was just kind of was there. Uh, we all brought, you know, I think Walt brought obviously his power. Um, Pavel was extremely talented, both goal scoring. He could shoot. He had the best. I used to tell him, I said, Pav, you don't have to pass to Walt every time. And Walt would say, shut up. Oh, he, <laughs> he, he would start. bitch about <laughs> it. I'm sure. And I'd say, and I'd say, uh, I'd say, Pav, just so you know, you're the best playmaker on our line. You are also the best shooter. <laughs> exactly. So don't, you know, like let it go, you know? And, uh, he was That's a great so human being. We, I really enjoyed playing with those guys. Andy Strickland and Cam Jansen yeah. here for you for GadgetBuyback.com. Yeah. Gadget Lab, they got a store here locally if you're in St. Louis, 5541 Telegraph Road. Here's the deal. you got an old phone, maybe a cracked tablet. Maybe it's perfect, but it's a little bit older. Mm. Turn it in right now. www.GadgetBuyback.com. Upgrade your devices, phones, computers, watches. Anything. Doesn't have to be Apple either. No. Get those tablets turned in. Again, www.gadgetbuyback.com, 877-772-8880. Now back to the interview. Yeah. We got a couple more for ML, man. You've been great, by the way. Thanks for staying on with us like this. Yeah, I want to get the, the, uh, the Thrashers. I, I play with a bunch of guys that I, I believe you You play with Bolton and Colby. Yes. And Colby. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Were they yeah. I, and I, and Hosa, right? Or and no? Hosa, yeah, and Hosa, yeah. Oh, you had yeah. some back and badass guys on that team. First off, what about Heatley? Yeah, Bolts, Bolts. No, Hosa was traded for Heatley. So That's right. Oh, I, right. I knew that, Andy. So I, <laughs> sit down. I, I, yeah, I left. I left St. Louis uh, and Maybe. went to got signed by Atlanta to a two year deal, and Heatley was there still. And obviously, Heatley was a was a Wisconsin guy, so we talked on the phone. But then we never did end up playing together because that whole year was wiped out with a lockout. Yeah. And then they made the trade the next training camp, um, and uh, Hosa came in. What a what a player! What a class human being he is. Um, and uh, and Kobe obviously too loved Kobe love great Kobe. person great guy. yeah I love Kobe and we we brought him into Montreal last year part of the reason was because because I knew him um, you know Nate Thompson was there to play with him in L A but you know I said to Burge you know I said hey this guy I don't know how well he's gonna play because I'd seen him play in L A and it wasn't going no. great but I said I know one thing he, he will not hurt our room because no. you never know with guys like that right exactly. there's always people think oh he's this and oh he's that and he's selfish I'm like listen. Great guy. Uh, That's why I brought Kobe. it up, Mel, because I, yeah. he, he's fu- he was awesome. And Bolts, yeah. those two were, they both came from from Atlanta and they came to the Devils, and I met him for the first time. Yeah. Oh my god! Yeah, Bolts I and mean, I became very are still are to this day. I thought. Real good friends, real good friends. He's yeah, we, so uh, funny. Yeah, yeah, we had a lot of fun together. <laughs> yeah, great. He's guy. doing well. He's over in. Uh, he's still under Lou's Rome over in the island right now. Yeah. We, yeah, I don't think yeah. he's allowed to come on this podcast. Really? What's he doing though? He's scouting? fucking scouting, man. Nice. I think he's scouting for he's, yeah, he's just the best of the yeah. best. He's oh scouts, my god! Yeah. Well, I you know, listen, we don't do a lot of these things either. And, I know. Uh, but Burge was great uh, and said, "Yeah, go on." And uh, I want to help out the St. Louis guys. You know? No, so, I yeah. know, I know. We appreciate that. I got to ask you about the but the, the Habs though before we let you go. Like, you guys did a lot of moves here, yeah, man, you and did. this off season. So, like, yeah. what's the expectations now? Do they go up a notch for you guys internally? Like, what's your guys' thought heading oh, into the sure. season? Yeah. Yeah, they they do right. they do for us, and I know for our players they do too. I mean, we we uh, you know, Burge has done a really good job the last few years of, of stockpiling draft picks. We have a lot. Of, we we've had the most draft picks of anybody in the league the last few years. We have 14 more coming this year. We use some of that currency this summer to, you know, we we gave a pick to get Edmondson before a free agency. We gave a pick for Allen. We gave a pick in the uh, uh, Josh Anderson deal. Yep. But uh, you know we we we've got obviously great leadership in guys like Shea Weber and Carey Price, and we've got guys in the next age level that are really you know I really like the makeup of our age groups now. But we you know I think because of the flat cap, we were in a position, and you know we've been criticized at times uh, for not spending the cap. But you know I don't think you spend it on players you don't want, and so this year we were in a good position. Uh, cap wise to take advantage a little bit of the, of the flat cap situation. And we had, you know, obviously um, we were aggressive. We had some things we wanted to do and 
we checked a lot of boxes. You know, we thought we needed a really good backup goalie that could play 25 games, and and uh, we're excited to get Jake. And uh, you know, uh, Joel Edmondson is a solid NHL defenseman that has um, um, you know won a cup and and is you know brings brings grit and penalty killing and size and up front we wanted to get bigger for years we've been a very small group up front we wanted to get bigger and we were able to do that with josh anderson yeah. and, and even to fully you know we need that goal scoring and to fully oh, yeah. is, is six foot one so he's not small and i know he, he it's not like he's you know a guy that runs around killing people but it's still having that length on some players but josh and, will uh, get in there he will josh will Listen, fucking get and, in and, there and, I, and, and no, feed off that no, energy i too, talked baby. to some players too after you guys yeah. made that you know after you said him to that extension and and they're like man this guy's a sick player if yeah, he can stay healthy and put boy. it together what what allowed you guys to have that much confidence though man to hand hand him that type of contract well i think you know you, you try listen there's always there's risk in any contract you give him you never know with injuries or, or what can happen i know he came off a year this year where he was injured and he only had a goal but you know his three previous years i think were 17 19 and 27 so yeah. i don't know where it falls exactly but you know, having players that, 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 you know, can contribute in your lineup, even if they don't score, you know, and he'll do that in games. You know, he's a guy that's going to get in on the four check. He's, he can skate. He's yep. a guy that's going to play some, play, have some physical play. Uh, he's a guy that's going to drive the net. Um, and so, you know, you, maybe you're not the guy always that gets the point of the goal, but you, you can have an effect, um, in, in, in on things you know so um we've always liked him as a player and um like i said the opportunity you know was there and burge was did a good job in 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 acquiring him and and you know he's one year away from ufa so you have leverage as a player too right um so you know we we um you know, we stepped up and gave him a good deal, and I know he's really excited to be in Montreal. And we're very excited. Like we got Romanov coming as well this year. We'll be in Montreal. The defenseman that won the World Junior Defenseman of the Year, uh, and uh, or Defenseman of the Tournament. And we've got some younger kids coming. And obviously, the way Suzuki and Kakinami played in the in the in the playoffs, in the play-in round, in the playoffs, was very exciting for us too. So. Uh, you know, we've got a good mix and, and, you know, we, we think we're for sure a playoff team and anything less than, uh, and I think we can make some noise. I think you know, we don't have, I wouldn't say up front, we have a superstar, but I think we have, you know, we're, we're really good in net. We're, uh, good on defense and deep and we're deep up front. So I think we'll have three or four lines that can score. I know, I know. Well, Can you repeat that one more time, Mel? I'm just joking. No, no. Cam was Cam was trying to uh, type that, write that down. I'm gonna he, write he, all that he, down. He lost I'm something. Sit, I'm gonna scout <laughs> hey, now. Hey, but before we let you go, listen. I know you've interviewed for a GM job with several teams: yeah. Vegas, Minnesota, most recently yeah, four Florida. times. I have, yeah. Four, yeah. four times. And like, yeah. I, I think you're gonna get a job one day. You should. Man, you not many people have your resume. You Everything will. you've done from coaching of to playing, player will. development, assistant GM, like. Come on. Hopefully somebody wakes up one of these days and hires you That's as a GM. That's what we do, Mel. So That's what we we're going to get you. But no the experience up. of interviewing, like, has it left you disappointed? Has it left you frustrated? Like, where's your motivation right now to continue to move forward? No, I I, I think, listen, you're always disappointed when, when you know, you, you go and try to do something and it doesn't work out for you. Um, you know, the Florida thing was probably the most disappointing just in the sense that I, that you don't get a job because you played somewhere, but I thought with, with everything else I've done in my career that, uh, I thought that was going to work out. It didn't. Um, but you know, uh, I, I think to get frustrated by it is, you know, uh, there's a lot of guys out there that, that are working hard trying to get to those positions. And, you know, it is what it is. I, I know that I've, I know that I've put in the work. I know, you know, as a player and, and scouting and coaching, and I've done basically everything. And there's one more thing. There's one thing I need on my resume that I don't have. And you know what that is. Yeah. And I believe if I had that, if I had had, if I had had that way back in 1987, I had been a cup champion my whole mm. life. You wanted I to be on I, the Camus Trick podcast. I we think, know the one I, thing. <laughs> we get it. I, yeah, I think I would. I think I would have had one of those jobs already. But yeah. that's just, you know, that's that's life. You got to, you got to. Uh, I've always, um, I was a scout 
uh, Dennis Bonvi, I remember we were, yeah, we were yeah, in New York. We were, we were in New York. Yeah, I'm sure Jansky fought him a bunch. But I remember we were driving somewhere and we were having this conversation. Bond said some really, some that I was always stuck with me. He said, he said, Mel, he says, I choose to be thankful for what I have and and not what I don't have, because if they took this scout, if they took at the time he was a pro scout, that was yeah. his title. He's now director of pro scouting. But we were talking about moving up and guys want mm-hmm. to move up. And he said, you know, if they took this job away from me tomorrow, I I miss it like crazy so he said i i choose to be thankful that i have this job yeah. you know mm. so um i'm 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 in a great spot working with great people jeff molson's a great owner and mark bergevin's a great boss and uh you know so that's the way i look at it and they're all good experiences and and someday if it's meant to be it's it'll happen and if it isn't it isn't it'll man. happen we man. all look it'll up happen. to you here man i know every time so you much, walk into a room like so I much said. respect mel damn thanks yeah. for doing this man we really appreciate it you're the man now get back to ice fishing get back yeah, yeah go lake. go ch- <laughs> go kick your feet up hey. and chill out do you, you? do you have a boat by the like, way are you chilling like how's your place real quick just real quick how's your place I'm, like what's your he, setup he just like? built it yeah it's great I, i'm 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 standing right now outside on uh, my deck overlooking the st Croix oh, river which is oh. which is beautiful and uh the weather's you know i mean listen it is what it is right i will say this i have a john deere uh tractor uh snowblower um lawnmower thing i just had that's i just switched that today you cut the, your own grass the, for, is that what you're saying you for need the that. first time for the first time in my life yes <laughs> yeah, i was very fortunate i was very fortunate and and places i lived and when i was playing um i, I but I do it myself now. I, I sent I sent some video. I didn't. My wife snuck outside when I was blowing, doing the snowblower last year, uh, riding along in the tractor, and she taped me. So I sent it to some of them guys in the uh, in St. Louis, and they were like, "Come on, that's you." No, I gotta see that. Me. I'm gonna get that yeah. tape. By the hey, way, hey, tell yeah. Nicholas to start cutting the lawn. Yeah, okay? yeah, 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 exactly. Have, have your son. Uh, you guys start cutting. He's in school. He's at he's at Michigan. He's okay, Michigan. fine. He can go to school. Okay, that's okay wow. then. Okay, yeah. he's got to fly back, cut the grass. No, <laughs> yeah. Mel, you're the man. Thank you for taking the time, dude. Yep. Go kick your feet okay, up guys. and do your shit. I we'll will. be keeping Appreciate track it, of you. Please. All right, Mel. Okay, right guys. on, big boy. Thanks. Take, Take care, care, dude. Bye bye. Right, that was Scott Mellenby yeah. on the Cam and Strick podcast. Great dude, man. Yeah, man. He's just the real. He's the real. Just, just like a stand-up dude that's smart, that's played a lot of games. Like, how can you not hire him for something? Well, he I know is. That, I know, he I know, is. I know, I time out. He's got for, hired by three different organizations. I know. No, exactly. Why can't he take the next jump? Which he will. He's still young, and he'll find that role, and somebody's going to be happy. Some organization's going to be happy with him leading a charge, man. That's just the way he is. That's mm-hmm. He's born to be that guy. Look, he, when you wear a C everywhere you go, Man, that, there's a reason for that, dude. You know, I think uh, a lot of these teams, like you look at Arizona, they hire Bill Armstrong, whose reputation is through the draft. Yeah. Um, you look at, um, you know, Billy Zito, who got hired with Florida, and, you know, yeah. they weren't going to spend a lot of money, obviously, and, and you yeah. know, it's Florida. They, they give their goaltender a lot of money. And their coach. And they give their coach a lot of money. I don't know how much is left over for the GM. I know. Um, that could have something to do with it. Mel probably wants a couple schmel. No, you just never know. You don't know what it comes down to. But you know what? He's a guy who obviously uh, who worked on the player side as an agent. It's just a little bit different. I don't know what they're looking for. Every organization is looking for something different. You know? Yeah, maybe maybe uh, a guy like um, Joel Quinnville can take over some of that role as a GM, as far as like some of the dynamic that goes into it. That. Billy Zito has one aspect, and then you have a big guy, guy like Joel who's making a lot of money. And, you could tag and, that and in. And there. let me just say this, too. Uh, and I don't know how it went down, so I'm just speculating because I think this does happen. I think sometimes um, teams go with the individual they feel like they can control a little easier than maybe the alternative. you know. And you have a guy who maybe who uh, – and I'm not saying that's exactly what happened here, but I wouldn't be surprised if – there's mandates and stuff like that, as we hear from owners, whatever. Hey, you're going to have to cut salary this way, that way. and You're going to pay a lot for a coach. You're not going to pay a lot for hey, a GM. Because I, I, you never know how much control they have, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, you may think as a GM, I'm going to walk in and I'm going to have – like, not every organization's run like Doug Armstrong runs the St. Louis Blues, where you know who's in charge. He's fully in charge and he runs it. Oh, yeah. Kenny Holland's another one of those guys, obviously, who's now in Edmonton. I mean, those established guys, David Poyle, like the established guys, and not everybody loves David Poyle, but I'm just talking about guys that have been around for a long time that you know are in full control of their organization, no questions asked. Yeah, no, I know. And and I think Scotty uh, Mel would go in there and say, no, I'm, I'm in control, mm-hmm. and I've always been in control, whether I was a captain or whatever I do. 
And if I'm going to take this gig, I'm not going to take it unless I have both hands into it. Well, let me give you an example. Like Chris Drury, another guy who hasn't been a GM yet, and he will be a GM. He's working for the New York Rangers now. Just a really good player, you know? Won a cup with Colorado and was a real good player for a long time. Played in the Little League World Series. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. He's like a natural natural athlete, you know? I saw that. Um, You know, apparently he interviewed with the Florida Panthers, and he pulled himself out. Yeah. You know, yeah, I mean, yeah, no he shit. pulled himself out. So <laughs> what went down with the Florida Panthers, you don't know. Billy Armstrong obviously was a finalist for that job. But, you know, every time you interview, you got to look at it like, you know what, it gets you more experience for how these situations go. And like I said in the open, Cam, Scott Mellonby, if he gets an opportunity to be a GM one day, it's going to be the right gig. And he won't worry about not getting the Vegas gig or the Minnesota gig. The Florida gig or any other, you know, organization. And he's sometimes it's nice with. to be an assistant GM and just like absorb everything. And I know he's probably like, oh, I need, it. I wish I could just make the decision on this certain thing. But you'll get there, man. And you're making decent money now, and you're learning, and you're part of a monster organization. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, you're like, I don't, I don't need. It's like moving to a house and not having to live in an apartment like you did. It's like I could just chill hotel or a hotel in the bubble, or whatever. I the mean, bubble, fucking misery. One way there, dog shitting all over the fucking place. That poor hotel went under, <laughs> went under business, out of business because of your fucking dog that you don't take care of. But the, but my point is, he could just chill and just absorb and just wait and just wait, man. So he's in a good spot and he's a great guy. Mm-hmm. We love him, man. Like honestly, when, when he you went into back and watched, um, the videos like from his career, like, yeah, yeah. did anything surprise you there? No, I, I knew I knew more about him than I I knew. A lot about other guys that we've had on. I knew Mel. I knew his upbringing. You know, you, you met him. He was my coach. Although I did so, somewhat forget about that because I've known him with in so many other ways mm-hmm. with the alumni and shit like that. So I forgot that he was my fucking coach for a year. <laughs> I'm an idiot. But the point is, like, I, knew, I don't think he loved being a coach. By the way, I don't think he liked it. It he wasn't his time. thing. Nah, he's like, like you I, know need what? To, I need to be in charge. Yeah, you know, was what? it Davis Payne too yeah. uh, for a year? So and, he's and, like, and then I think. I think the first year either he was with Davis when Davis got fired and Hitch took over, or he was with Davis for a full year. Was he with then, Davis? Because if oh, you were yeah. with Davis, he was with Davis for a little while. Hitch is a different story. Yeah. Well, we were Davis Payne. He's telling never you. And he's telling we you. We played a couple games. Do. And he's telling you. I know. Now he's telling you what to do. More like he's in charge. What if you're Brad Shaw and you've been an assistant coach forever? Yeah. You keep getting passed over, time after time after time. You want to be a head coach. Yeah. And this this guy who was coaching down in the minors like. Just completely leapfrogs you with Davis. You know how difficult that must be. Yeah, I know. I don't know how these guys keep that together. But why wouldn't you just want to be an assistant coach? Because you know when, like, in like real business, (laughs) Cam, if the kiss ass who's working on the third floor all of a sudden gets hired, he comes up to the seventh floor and he's your boss. Oh my! You know how hard that is. Like a lot of people cannot handle that. Think about doing that in a competitive environment. No, I know. No, I in a team environment. I remember when I retired. Right, ten years in the NHL. You, 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 I end in uh, Nottingham where you're just treated like gold. Now you're going to fucking radio. <laughs> and I'm, I'm, I'm are with. You make, are you drawing the comparison between Nottingham to radio? No, no, no. I'm just, I'm okay. letting you know how people treated me. Yeah. Your last year's in the show, although I'm not a fucking monster, no, I get treated I like you. gold. Uh, like, if I can everybody, I'm an older yeah. guy. Yeah, I got you. Go to you. Nottingham, you're a fucking big dog. Mm-hmm. I come back, and I'm starting from scratch in AM radio, and I'm with 23-year-old kids. And my boss, who I like, treats us all like children, because we are. I just got done playing 10 years. As a heavyweight, mm-hmm. fucking spending money, making money, doing this. Doing I thought that. I read today you were a middleweight. Is that a heavyweight? Those he or? thinks I'm a fucking middle. I'll smack his fat ass <laughs> in his fucking face. I love him. I'm just joking. He's kind of tubby. He actually did lose weight, and I'm going to give him credit for that. Oh, good. But when I started. He go- fought the heavies, too. Oh, fucking hey, dude. He threw lefts, too. But my point is, like, I just was treated like a child. These kids all got out of college. I'm just done in a 10 year NHL career, and I'm fucking married, and I'm just like, what? And I'm just like, they're like, okay, guys, this is what you need. And I'm like, what the fuck? Like, I just, I'm like, oh my god, give me out of this, give me yeah, out of this. Yeah, the transition from oh going, my god. I'm like, from being doing? a professional athlete to going to work in the kind of the real oh world. Oh my god, as it, with with 23 year olds, and I'm no offense to them, but you're just like, mm-hmm. I'm not 23, mm-hmm. I'm 30 fucking four, or 33, or whatever. I'm 10 years older. Like, I got money. Like, what? Like, I hated it. I'm like, give me my own show. But I wasn't mm-hmm. there yet. Mm-hmm. So you have to work for it. And I and they were great. But I'm like, I just got, I'm like, what the fuck? I go home to Kate. I'm like, I feel like a fucking child. Mm-hmm. I feel like a fucking child. I can't take it. I know. But I, I sucked it up, man. And now we're good. Okay. <laughs> That's good. what it is. But All right. Anyway. So, Mel, listen, keep, keep it real. Like, <laughs> when, when Cam and I get our own organi- organization, we'll hire you probably. We'll try. I mean, we'll just figure it out. I don't want to make, any, and, I I want make any promises. You got, we gotta, we'll, we'll have, like, Mel and fucking... 
oh boy, Neil Smith and <laughs> Keenan and <laughs> we got everybody. Lou, if he wants to fucking Brian play. Brian Burke. Brian Burke, he wants to hang out. Shit, we got all the big dogs. JD. JD. No, he's working for uh, New York. He's working for New York. He's we, working for New York. We knew that. Andy. He'd probably rather leave there. And come no, he wants to hang us. out with us. Yeah. Tom Dundon. We'll can pay have him more money. Tom Dundon can have a role. But Mel's the best, dude. I'm glad I, we, when when we we're thinking about what's going on with everything, and I'm like, let's get Scotty Mel and be on. Yeah, fucking guy, I love him. So he was great. Oh, for sure, man. And he was happy to come on. And like, listen, I will say a big shout out to Montreal Mark Bergevin for letting him do it because yeah, a, I lot, know. a lot of organizations do not want exactly. people working in the organization doing interviews like that. So he let him do it. And uh, and obviously Mel for coming on with us. Yeah, All right, as always, that interview is brought to you by CarShield and CarShield.com. Hey, mention the promo code Cam. You're going to save ten percent. I mean, do you like what saving money? What happens if you mention my name? No, like, who's Andy? <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Andy Warhol. He was a great painter. 800-857-2481. Save 10%. Hey, structure your plan the way that you want it. You want it long, have it long. You want it short, have it short. I'd man. rather long and girthy. <laughs> Whatever you... Edit that out. Edit that. <laughs> edit that out. Coverage, Stop saying that, Coverage then. isn't one you size fits all. idiot. Okay. There you go. There you go. So you want a long-term plan? Have a Depends long-term you plan. You want a short-term plan? Have a short-term exactly. plan. Exactly. Customize your plan the way that you see fit. Yes. Simple. Okay. Simple, just like I did. Take this damn car right up there, fix it, bring it back to me. That's exactly what they did. Bud Light Seltzer. Yeah, maybe. Get that ugly Christmas sweater, sweater variety pack. And uh, Say that one more time. Your ugly Christmas sweater variety pack. Check that out. In stores now. I like the check ugly those those Christmas sweater. I do too, man. I do. I, I, I fucking. We I'm need ready a Cam for and Strick ugly Christmas sweater. We have to make one of those. Start selling those online with our Shit. merchandise that's coming out yeah, soon. Yeah, we're getting some merchandise. Black cherry, strawberry, lemon lime, mango. and mango. Mango, baby. Everybody loves mango. Mango, baby. Why do you like mango Why so much? Why do you like mango so much? I like so mango. Much. Why Cam, is mango that? this and mango that. Ooh, mango. 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 Yep. All right. BudLight.com. Have it delivered to your house. Less than a gram of sugar, 100 calories, 5% alcohol, so it'll do you good for your holiday party that's coming up. Is our holiday parties on? Dude, I'm having motherfucking holiday parties, baby. I just got to move in my new house. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm not because my I house moved is too all, small I in the blue all, part. Of- I moved all weekend, man. It is not fun. It's actually a pain in the ass. Yeah, well... I, I'm, I don't I don't move myself. I fucking pay for people to fucking move my shit. You think, I'm I, moved, not fucking you think cheap. I moved it myself? So I, anybody ever asks you, like, can you come help me move? I'm going to be go, go fuck yourself. Oh, can you help go me? Go fuck yourself. Listen, I didn't I didn't move it Cam, myself. Cam, what are you doing this Saturday? I'm like, whatever I want. I hired- can you help me move because I'm cheap? No. No, I can't. I don't do that shit. I hired- Fuck uh, do I look like? Moving America, dude. Good. <laughs> and they were great. <laughs> Okay, so check out Bud Light God. Seltzer. Anyway. <laughs> All right, keep it handsome. Just like we were talking yeah. about Mark Bergevin, we're going to send you a hoodie. Mel, you're getting a hoodie. We support the Montreal Resource Center. Yeah. You should, too. If you support anti-bullying, then you, better. you support Fight Ugly and keep it handsome. Hey, check out that beer moisturizer. Hey, you can- and you know what? Real quick, dudes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the beer moisturizer, the... The, the head balm, the head balm, the shampoo. It makes you the smell conditioner. handsome. And tell your wife, all like, the gels, hey, smell my and the hair. pace. Yes, smell my hair. For once, you smell my hair. So it's me smelling your beautiful hair. Do that. She's gonna think you smell handsome. Then you might get lucky. That's how it goes. But as far as the boys concerned, guys, like we all go through it, man. Like it's there. And here's what's cool about this whole thing is, you will get bullied. This kind, I, I did. Believe it or not, was like, oh sure, Cam. I, I kind of did. Go ahead, get pissed on. Let me tell. Tell me that's not bullying. But again, I fought the dude, which I'm not saying you should do. But afterwards, we hung out, and you became friends. We became buddies. No, my parents end, took him out to our house. It ends in a happy. I story. know. It's that's ha- what you do. Happy ending, man. You do. Now, all, not all guys are going to be like that, but a lot of guys, man, they grew up weird, and maybe they don't know how to mm-hmm. not be a bully. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, you fucking tattoo him a couple times, and you talk to the kid, yeah. and he's actually decent. Yeah. But his mom and dad are fucked up. But you know you what? Have a daddy. This Mitchell Miller situation is a perfect example yeah. where if you start bullying kids, don't think that's not going to stick with they, you, man. I know. Just remember that. That could come back to bite exactly. you, too. Especially when you're not fucking, like, when you do something stupid, guys, let me just tell you, and I've done it. When you fuck up, you better get in front of that motherfucking camera and be like, oh, boy, I fucked up. Mm-hmm. I'm a fucking disaster, and I admit it, and I'm sorry, and I am going to fucking help yeah. myself. I'm going to work on this. Here's why I fucked up. But if you're like, oh, yeah, babe, I'm sorry about that, babe, baby, fuck you. Mm. Fucking show me. All right, so you go to uh, keepithandsome.com. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. And get that Fight Ugly hoodie. 
buy all your hair stuff, that body spray, make yourself, uh, make sure you smell good to finish out the year. Smell handsome. To finish out the year with the holiday parties. Mention the promo code Cam and Strick, you're going to save 15% too. You can also go to Amazon and buy it from there. Easy peasy, dude. If you want to have it delivered to your house from Amazon. Amazon. Again, keepithandsome.com. All right, Bel- like Bellman and Bellman.com. Hey, if you have a used car, man, they will buy it from you, and they'll pay you good cash for it, too. Yeah, so will. take it in there yeah, in Troy, Missouri. One side of the street, the Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. Other side of the street, it's the Cadillac Buick GMC. Damn right. Get an Enclave like Cam. Get an Escalade like me. You can check out one of the Jeeps, man. Fun, all four seasons of the year. You don't want a Wrangler? Get an XRT. Yeah. That's simple. How about a pink Jeep with small wheels? Whatever. Two-door, whatever you want, man. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever suits your fancy, they will get it for you. Best service you will find anywhere. Oh, that's the key, With dude. Bellman.com. Uh, your wife com. could buy a car there. Your wife could buy a car there. Oh, yeah. Why is that? Be- you know why. Don't, don't, don't. You don't want that guy. Just give me like a little reason just why. It, because when your wife walks into a fucking car dealership and Ding Dong comes out like, rup, 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 like, oh, fuck, hey, who's this fucking bar here? Like, Come on, how much money you got? Do you know I did this, baby? Fuck you. Fucking idiot. Kate's got to call me like, this Hoosier's all over me. I don't know what to do. I'm like, I'm there. I got to go there and smack this motherfucker around. <laughs> fucking idiot. <laughs> Fucking piss me you off. You won't find that at Bellman. Not though. even. Oh my God, no. It's the exact opposite. Kate goes there and just hangs out. Whatever, without buying a whatever car. you envision in your head is the exact opposite. Oh, dude, you you guys know. What I'm yes, about. all right. Bellman.com with two N's. B e h l m a n n dot com. Check out their incredible website today. All right. Also, Victor Hockey. Before yeah, we get out of here, yeah, absolutely. Great hats, great T-shirts, great hoodies. Check it all out. Promo code Cam and Strick, you're going to save 20%. That's pretty Shit, sick. Yeah, baby. And their stuff is unbelievable. Their hats are sick. Colorado. They've got the great logo. Uh, he's been a little bit under the weather, man, so we hope you're doing okay over there with Victor Hockey. He's good, man. Feel He'll be better. good, baby. He'll Feel be better. good. He's tough. Okay? Yeah. Um, they've got the pine tree that goes into a hockey stick. They've got mm-hmm. the palm tree, man. Great logos. And you should get one, too. Be different, dude. People are going to be like, hey, where'd you get that? Oh, it's that, from a cool-ass company in Colorado. Dude, that's what you want when you go to the grocery store when you're by yourself. Yeah. And the Cougs are what's like, that wow, what are you What's at? that hat? The, why, are the, why are the Cougars coming out to me like saying, like, what's, why, am I, why do I look so cool with these clothes How do you on? define Cougar? 35 to f- 90. <laughs> <laughs> 35? Yeah. Starts that young? Yeah. Really? When you have a kid. You I have a kid at fucking I, I 25. Think, I, 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 I think it's higher than that. Andy... <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you what a fucking cougar's age is, please. Thank you. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, yeah, going back to the days at the, at the Aquaman. Yeah, we know. With no with a cut-off shirt on and, and fucking jeans that are Wranglers. Oh, yeah. We own 40-year-olds. At Victor Hockey USA on, on uh, Instagram and Twitter, so check out their incredible uh, uh, accounts there. And check out their website, victorhockey.com, and uh, get your merchandise there. We have a website, too, Cam. Yeah, we do. Cam and Strick Podcast. W-W- no, www.cam and Strick Pod, baby. Oh, d- no, 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 Cam and Strick. Dot com. Is it? www.cam and Strick. Dot com. Michael Bain, just hooking oh, it dude, up. He sends us all kinds the of ones and twos on there. He's the best of the best. He dude. is. This guy is so good out of California. Everything simplified there. And I and people on like enforcers, all you have Cam and Strick. Dot com. All you guys on Facebook that that tag me in like uh, enforcer stuff and all that, mm-hmm. like I. I Check out www.camandstrick.com. So if you want to watch, there. if you want to listen to any previous episodes, everything's there. So everything is there, so you don't have to go anywhere else. It's like a one-stop shop for everything you need. So check that out, uh, camandstrick.com. You'll be able to buy merchandise from there and all that good stuff coming up very, very soon. www.camandstrick.com. Jamie, what are you telling me Plus, right now? My engineer is showing me something. I don't give a shit. We could cut the. It says Dina. No, it's Michael Dane. Michael I Dane. Dane. That's what he said. I said Bane. You said Dane. Bane. You no, dumb I fuck. Said Dane. I thought you said Dane. We're going to have to go. J- my enge- I like, thought I said Dane. Jamie the engineer. It's, I trust it's, more than Andy. It's I think you might have. D-A-E-H-N. If you called him Bane, it's kind of cool, though, because Bane's kind of a cool character back mm-hmm. in Batman. Yeah. So we're going to let this slide. Michael Dane. We're going to let this slide. The engineer knows more than you know, so I'm going to take his fucking. Michael Dane's the man, dude. Yeah. And he hooked it up, so we appreciate yeah. that. Um, <laughs> there is something on the uh, <laughs> website, though, for for those companies out there, those individuals who want to yeah. jump on board and be a partner with us. Yeah, you want to sponsor the podcast? We'll throw it everywhere, baby. Dude, just jump on board. Yep, you can get our information straight from www.camastrick.com. All right, this has been episode number ninety, Joey Juno style, uh, Ryan O'Reilly style. Say Ryan O'Reilly. I think Mike Madonna wore number ninety. He did in in, in fucking Detroit. in Detroit. Yeah, yeah, he did. Somebody else wore 92. Yeah. 
Yeah, um, I can't think of it. Okay. It doesn't matter. Thank you guys. For Hit listening. us up with your 90s. Best players of the 90s. Let us know. Yeah. Pablo Barre. Hi. <laughs> Chemistry Podcast.